Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Giant Bombcast, episode 772. Happy Tuesday on this bright, at least for me here in the Bay Area, sunny morning. I'm so done with the rain, y'all. Uh, welcome to January 17th, 2023. I've bought too much rain apparel, and now I'm thinking I have to return all of it instead of being a, a smart person and keeping it for the next rainy season. I'm just going to return it and rebuy it later. Uh, Co-captain of the ship, uh, who's who has a ghost in the machine... We'll get to that eventually. Jeff Grubb. Uh, hello, I, uh, what are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. You know what? I actually don't know what I'm talking about 90% of the time. Um, well, fair enough. It, it, it's been raining there for like two years now. What's going on? I don't know. I don't know if we're, I'm still in a drought. I'll, I'm speaking for all <laughs> yeah, of California. Well, it, I mean, listen, it rains, but you don't, you don't get to keep that water. That water belongs to the ocean. It all just runs right off the ground, right back into the ocean. And then it's going to rain on you again next year. I thought about it's adopting a drought. Thought about yeah. adopting a drain and just being like a person that walks out with their uh, galoshes with a rake and just cleans the drain. You know, thought about doing that. Jeff yeah, Backlar, you you're also look. here. Uh, you you can't be caught outdoors without any type of galoshes. No, I can't be caught outdoors with anything less than SPF 35 on my face. Uh, uh, everyone knows that. Can I? I've got. I've got a story that I have to tell. Well, please tell tell your story. The, the, speak your piece. The rain reminded me. I was in a winery <laughs> this weekend. The Matchbox Twenty lyric. Sorry, go ahead. Was in a winery. <laughs> okay. The rain and... reminded me. <laughs> go ahead. I'm down there, and we're there for a birthday party. Uh, we stay overnight. The next morning, it's like this, you know, it's like a hotel. And then across the street is the winery. And the winery is like a really spread out sort of like winter wonderland thing. So there's like fire pits. There's like s'mores. There's live music. There's a mini ice skating rink. A lot of little shops. Get your hot cocos. Get your like boozy, boozy things, whatever. We're in the main winery place, which is a bar. And uh, it's early. It's like 10 o'clock, so we need some breakfast. We sit down, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, like, those sweet, sweet bongos you all know and love start playing over the loudspeakers in we're, the facility. We're talking shoot drums, right? Like actual bong? Okay. Okay. Right? Yes, sir. Okay, yeah. Right? Yeah, so we're yeah. blessing the reins. Everyone's like psyched. We're like, yo, this the Pitbull Toto, song, right? This, yes, yeah, Pitbull, Mr. 305. From Aquaman. Right? So I'm like, oh, every, you know, who doesn't like fucking Africa, right? Everyone loves, loves that fucking song. We're just like bopping to it. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. This is all right. This is all right. Um, so that song plays, and then another song comes on. Uh, it's the song, uh, Lovely Day, Lovely Day. Sure. Lovely, okay. right? You heard that yeah. one a million yeah. times too. Mm -hmm. And then it goes off and like some Muzak starts to play or whatever. And then like seven minutes go by and all of a sudden it's like So like I'm very sensitive to that sort of stuff. So I start looking around and I'm just like Very sensitive to Africa. Not the continent, just the band. Yeah, <laughs> no, Toto's the band. Very Africa's the song. The song, the song, the song. Well, yeah. that's peculiar. They're playing Africa again. Everyone else at the table noticed that. They're like, oh, yeah, it turns out they are. It turns out they are. Sure, 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 sure. 25 minutes later, the song is played seven times. <laughs> you think that's the only CD they had at the winery? Maybe? I don't know what's going on. Okay, so I'm starting to have like a bit of a panic attack because I'm like, this is some Twilight Zone shit. The same glass is broken over and over again. Like the same group of people sure. are walking by. Like I'm just like, this is a loop. This is a loop. Gerald and Betty, this is a loop. Okay, so I'm fr I'm fr having a bit of a freak out here, and we move tables, right? So we're like, oh, let's get out of this and go further into the winery. Maybe this room, <clears throat> sure enough, lovely day, lovely day. And <laughs> Maybe it's like a people mover, you know? 
So that's what I'm, so we're all coming up with these conspiracy theories. We're like, is this place fucked up? Are they trying some like weird sort of you know uh, c- like wine conversion therapy, like psycho warfare? Like, are they trying yeah, to get everyone by the CIA? Absolutely, <laughs> right? Like, what kind of agent are like? What's happening at this winery? Wow. Are they just doing this so that everyone starts drinking and they forget about the fact that they've heard Africa forty eight times? This is the Havana effect. This is it. We found it. So I'm like, this is crazy. Let's go outside where there's probably no music and we can just like have our s'mores and drink our wine and maybe go ice skating. Like, Toto is out there waiting for you. (laughs) (laughs) There's a cover band. There's a Toto cover (laughs) band. Like, I don't know what to do. I go up to someone who's working there and I'm just like... Hey, this is weird, but you guys, you guys realize you're playing the same three songs over and over for what is now four hours. Uh Uh-huh. Weird, right? I don't know why. No one knows how to fix it. All of these motherfuckers knew what was happening and nobody could fix it. Nobody knew like where the, where it was coming from. Nobody knew how to, uh, 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 like change the the playlist or whatever it was. Who set up this PA system? It was just here. I, dude, I was fully expecting. It's not even plugged in. I was fully expecting someone to be like, "Sir, there is no music." Like, yeah. I was, I was expecting all of that. It Did you lose the, any time? Did you just wake up in a any ditches covered in blood? Was like uh, Dylan all like grown up? Yeah, we got home. He's thirty eight. <gasps> you know, uh, it was the I, wildest I blood emergency. I'll be right back. Okay. It was the wildest shit I'd ever really a, just because is it the a fact that like everyone let me pause you real quick, Becklar. Yeah. You think yeah. it's a you think it's a grub butt emergency or it's someone else's butt emergency? That question crossed my mind as well. I feel like it could go either way. It seemed like he had maybe been speaking off microphone to someone. Mm. But mm. maybe like, honey, make room, my butt's about to explode. I have to could have could have been anything. God bless uh, the rains. You know, uh, DJ T Money, he could have gambled on a fart. He could have. And, uh, you know, the money line came out, maybe. I don't know. So, anyway, I could not believe how many people, like, all collectively knew that this was happening at the place. And then, okay. So uh-huh, then, uh-huh. Uh, around three o'clock, I'm not, guys, this is why I feel like I was being trolled. Okay. All of a sudden, a different song starts to play and we're all like yeah we broke the loop we can go home it was like you know we were, it was like groundhog day we're like we're, we're we're gonna we're gonna be all right we're gonna be all right do you know what song it was it was roxana by toto yes that's Wait, really? exactly what it was Wait, really it was that song <laughs> it was exactly that song right rosanna right rosanna whatever right Ros- rosanna rosanna, yes. rosanna right it's, it's about rosanna arquette right yeah oh yeah. yes that bop right not Ooh. just the night is gone dun, 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 dun. right so i'm just like i'm like i love this song this song rules i even like it better than africa i'm super oh. jazzed about it awesome that song ends and then africa comes back <laughs> <laughs> i i okay in my what was happening I why think... did the one time rosanna come on uh-huh right what was happening? We're like, so someone's someone's fucking around, right? Oh, someone's oh, fucking. This totally. Is, this is this, I. Whenever I don't understand something, and I'm out in public, and especially when it's a place where like there's <laughs> people working, I'm like, this is just Gen Z humor, and then I walk away because I'm like, I don't understand it. I don't need to. I could just go die and be an old man somewhere else. Uh, leave me alone. It's just Gen Z humor. Walk away. Yeah. This is, people are saying this is a John Mulaney bit. I did John Mulaney talk about this specific thing? I don't know, but like. This are you literally actually with? happened to me. What's that? Who are you having wine with? <laughs> well, well, John Mulaney. Uh, no, <laughs> uh, I could. I like could not believe. Maybe also. Oh, maybe the people were doing the John Mulaney bit to us. Is that what the chat's uh, proposing? Oh. I don't know. I just think it is the most psychotic thing. We're like. There's definitely, if that's the case and someone was fucking around with me, that would imply that, like, there's people watching, like, closed circuit TV and seeing my group of friends who were there all clearly upset about the music situation that was unfolding. Man, it was so supremely weird. I, it a hundred, a thousand percent is a Gen Z fucking with everyone bit. Because. Well, then you know. 
then show yourself. Okay. Yeah. The man then behind the show curtain yourself. must step out and show himself. Absolutely. Yeah. Because make they totally... your TikTok. Okay. Okay. We're on the star of it, like some asshole. Okay. The elder millennial upset over Toto. <laughs> they they show totally yourself. they totally went after you talked to that one dude uh, and brought up Toto uh, in Africa constantly playing. They just totally went. All right, Gerald. We we got him. We got someone. Let's, let's <laughs> we got another one. Let's keep it on other buddy. All right. <laughs> Get Rosanna queued up, queued up, all right, in 40, 3, 2. And then that's how they got you, because we, I, as someone that worked in a coffee shop that controlled the music, we probably played Fetty Wap's Trap Queen 20 times in a row. <laughs> that's just insane. Back when liking Fetty Wap was okay. All right, right folks. Right, of course. Is, that's not on you. It's not on you, Jay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Brutal. <laughs> Absolutely brutal. Well, I'm glad yeah, you, you made their it. day. You, the, you made their day when you compl when you didn't you didn't even complain. They're like, no, we got one. He came up, he asked about it. We got one, boys. That's like you made their day. I guess I'm a big fish, right? Like they reel the big boy in. Yeah. You know, I'm All looking right, around man. this place, and I'm like, there's dozens of people at the winery, and my group all knew what was happening. Because we, we, we were all freaking out about it. But no one else in the winery seemed to care. I don't know if they're just brain dead idiots who can't understand like the world around. They're just like, wine, 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 wine. Like, I don't know, whatever it is. Man, I, I just felt like, such a, I felt like such a dick. I felt like I was in the Twilight Zone, man. I feel like if we ever have a public appearance, right, where all of us walk out one by one. And I'm not hinting towards anything, folks. Um... I am legitimately not hinting towards anything. Uh, I think you have. We have to somehow acquire the rights to Toto's Africa, and you have to walk out to it now, Bacalar. What? I'm, what are the? What are the rules I, around cover songs? Because uh, I don't uh, know. We, I always wonder that. Yeah, because like I think you can do it, but like you have to like if you play it on the radio, you still have to pay some money to the original person. I don't know. It's just There's like. It's like if I talk mess about someone and start saying allegedly it's fine, right? Yeah, exactly. I think that's how it works. Oh, okay. This is allegedly a cover. Uh, there's a, a Mario Paint version of uh, Africa by Toto that I wanted to make the theme song to my last night of the Dogs podcast, and Mike wouldn't let me. Uh, but I'm like, I always looked into I'm like, could we, could we do that? Could we actually use that? I, I don't know. But I don't know. We could just cover it ourselves and play it. I, th there's some, you know, music patent copyright lawyer that could speak to this. I think... Just to circle it back real quick, I'm not upset. I'm not upset that this that I got punked like that. What I am upset about, okay, is that someone deliberately tried to ruin the song "Africa" by Toto oh. for me. Okay. Someone was like, "You know what? I'm gonna murder this song in front of these people's faces and see if they can still stand it." And walk out of here still appreciating they, that song. They just wanted you to walk out thinking, because they're, they're, this is the part of the Gen Z humor. It's like the joke lingers on. Like They, they just want to see if they can get you in trouble by having you say the words, I hate Africa, and just see what happens. Because they're like, oh, you can walk out of this restaurant. Yeah. Oh, I hate, now I hate Africa. And like you bump in and uh, it's real embarrassing. Con. Yes, yeah. exactly. The uh, Larry David Curb Your Enthusiasm song plays. Yeah, exactly. I'm happy to report I still love Africa. <laughs> <laughs> and I still Whoa. love Toto. Shoo. Oh, man. Shoo. This is going to be a very awkward bombcast to get through if that, you didn't say that. Yeah. Um, all mm -hmm. right. Well, mm -hmm. my, my quick story. Greb, do you, do you have a story you want to share with the, the folks at home? I just no. have a quick little titty bitty. I want to hear your story. Ooh, don't like how I said that word. Um, titty bitty? As like, long as it's quick, I mean, it's fine. Uh, I was going to let it go, Jan. You were the one who ran and circled back. I think we were going to get away with it, and then you brought it, you called attention to it. I'm the one that is, like, laying down the cable, and, like, I see that there's, like, a knot there. I'm like, oh, I don't have to bring yeah. it up. And then I'll come back and bring it up. Um, yep. Three-day weekends, y'all. We, we just celebrated a three-day weekend here in the Ooh, United yeah. States. Mm -hmm. uh, shouts mm -hmm. out uh, to MLK Day. Uh, definitely go out of your way to learn about uh, critical race theory, folks at home. I don't fucking care if you get get at me for telling folks to learn critical race theory, <laughs> yeah. but you should do it uh, anyway. <clears throat> I have a problem with three day weekends. Can any of you gentlemen guess what my problem is? Yeah, I mean, is it as simple as like today feels like Monday, but it's not exactly that. Oh, it should okay. be the three day weekend should kick off on a Friday. I'm I, there. I like that. I feel all out of whack. It's not yeah. that like I feel like we don't 
we absolutely need to have our planning meeting on Monday, but then it just throws off my whole thing for the rest of the week. And it's, I need to get the Monday gunk off of me, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You, you rate, you raise an interesting point. I mean, I wonder if that's ever been discussed in a more serious way where like, you know, the powers that be were just like, you know what we did kind of, we did kind of fuck up making Monday the day to have off. Like, maybe we can just reverse engineer all these holidays that we've established. Because MLK Day is only, like, 40 years old. It's not even that old. Yeah, um, we, we can make some adjustments. We'll just put out some patch notes. Like, let's just update the firmware and uh, f- do a little flip flipperoo mm-hmm. and put all the Monday holidays on the Friday. And then you don't come out of the weekend all flippity-floppity and, and ass backwards, right? All right, here's my other suggestion here. Besides moving the three-day weekend to the Friday to properly, like, take advantage of the time. Anytime we have a three-day weekend, y'all, mm. we just add extra day. Do, what? Wait, I'm sorry. So like a schmerz day? Yes, exactly. We we have like a, a little grace period between Saturday and Sunday, which we just deem extra day for any time we have a uh, a three day weekend. We just get so an you, extra weekend day. So so are you implying that we somehow like add more days to the year then? Yeah, we just won't saying. count it officially. Okay, I was I was on board with the whole <laughs> Monday to Friday thing. I think that makes a lot of lucid sense. Adding extra days to the calendar year, thus throwing the Earth into some sort of tailspin uh, doomsday uh, situation. No, I, I can't support you there, buddy. I've seen lots of episodes of Tailspin. They eventually figure it out by the end. If a bear <laughs> can fly a plane, we can all have a handshake deal about having extra day. Yes. The, at that point in the in the the speech, someone's like, "Who let this man in here? Uh, <laughs> please escort him out, security." And security. This is my main platform for when I run for mayor. Could could uh. we take the days? See, it's the problem because then, like, where do you take the days from if you want to keep the the calendar in sync? Well, if you want to upcycle, yeah. You know, I'm like, what if we just keep making February shorter? What if? Like, yes. Let's, like, let's see how short we can make February. Like, it's already. What, 28 days? That's not even a real month. So we just sprinkle all those days out throughout the rest of the year and, and into the weekends. And that's how okay. it works. Okay. I think, mm-hmm. I think that's cool. What a, what a pathetic little month, right? Yeah. yeah. Can't yeah. hang. It can't hang. It's, it's embarrassing. Exactly. I'm for February. I, I walk into all my stores with seasonal displays and they're already prepping for, for Valentine's Day. How am I supposed to celebrate all the other January holidays? Like... Uh, okay, I don't have a, a, an extensive list, but it right. was my well, there's, aunt's. There's, it was my aunt's there, birthday yesterday. How come Target doesn't want to have a display for that? Well, mm-hmm. February's uh, President's Day. Okay, so we don't have any other January ones. I'm just saying. I uh, see to to further either fix the confusion or get rid of the conf- confusion. Uh, I just say we just have the extra day. We don't need to adjust the calendars. We just. We just have extra day. It just happens. And then, uh, you know, we, we all take a group nap, a group <laughs> siesta. We just don't do anything. We just don't go anywhere. Just like, Man, like all right, as pause. Your, as your campaign advisor, okay, uh-huh. I gotta uh-huh. say, maybe you lead with the Friday to Monday thing and not talk about erasing other days of the year, okay? Is it era- erasing other days or is it adding days that don't count? See, I was you raised on whose lines tomato, anyway. Tomato. I've I've been told the points don't matter, and I guess neither do these days. What what does don't count mean, Jan? Because because literally <laughs> days are things you count. That's all they are. The, How do we not count them? Yeah. Look. Games. <laughs> Just like we're playing games <laughs> with the concept of time and reality here on the Giant Bombcast. Uh, we Man. also play video games, it turns out. Got that eject button ready for you whenever you need it. It's great now. I don't have to double click a thing on um, on VLC anymore and worry about the <clears throat> the sync going off. It's fine. Now now I can just Oh, see games, they're happening again. Yeah. Right um, there in the Goxler. Uh, th- this is this is uh hmm, hmm. Maybe Dan and I should run for mayor and and vice mayor together on like the oddest platform, and I think we would win. I'm dead. People set don't we would realize. Win. People don't realize there are vice mayors. 
Like, every, you know, yeah, vice mayor is a very real thing. I got like a little scared that you were about to say people don't know Dan Reichert's already the mayor of his town. <laughs> and it's I like, mean, oh man, I couldn't, I can't, I couldn't handle that. <laughs> I couldn't oh, handle that. We what could a, easily just like posi- we could easily like Nathan Fielder that into existence. Oh, it's not like really not even a question. If we wanted to, it would happen, and we could film it and make a documentary, and that could win a daytime Emmy. Oh man, what's that's stop- all I ever. What's want. stopping us? Like maybe I okay, mostly here's... Dan not wanting to be a mayor. No, <laughs> I think biggest... he wants to be. He okay. locks you. You're locked into that job for a while, right? Like, are you though? Are you though? Ah, okay. Okay. All right. All right. I've seen a sitcom or two. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but that's a that's a fantastic idea that I'm going to bury in my little treasure box, just like <laughs> pirates in One Piece Odyssey are seeking out. I don't know if they're seeking out a treasure in this game, Chef Grub. You've also been playing One Piece Odyssey. Uh, we did a quick look of this game. It's on the it's on the website now. It's on the YouTube's. This, you're, this might be a hot take, folks. This is a perfectly fine role playing game. Yeah, I uh, I like talked to Tam a little bit about it after we did um, Game Us Mornings last week, and because I was like, I know he's he's watched a lot of One Piece in his life. Uh, like, I think he's read a lot of it too. Oh, um, and so I'm like, okay, I want, I want to see. It. And he's like, I love it. He, it's exactly what he needed. And I'm like, okay, this this game is, it's like a decent Dragon Quest wrapped up in one piece stuff and for a one piece fan that's gonna like go a very long way it sounds like it sounds like like it's not quite doing that for you but like it's not in a, it's not offensive no and that's kind of what it's been like for me although i i'm after seeing the quick look and trying it i bounced off pretty quick jan i'm like i i know what this is and i know that if i really wanted one of these i should just actually go play dragon quest 10 instead yes um i this if you were a 11. fan of one piece 11 11? 11, yes, 11. 11. I think it tends to the MMO, I think. It's t- 11. It's oh, 11. It's yes, 11. The re- it's 11. And then, yeah, tends the MMO. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think this would probably be much more of a pleasant surprise if I was a, a big um, uh, a one-piecer, you know, sure. as, as they call them in the biz. Is that, what, is that the name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, one-piecers. Got it, okay. I, I think they're called the Dubloon Goons, right? Yes, yes. The, oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, uh, that's bad. <laughs> And because it's completely serviceable, uh, however, if like JRPGs or RPGs is kind of your main genre of games that you flock to, this isn't, I, okay, I, I'm, I was about to say this isn't doing anything new. The combat system is fairly interesting, but in terms of the, the pacing and the cadence of it, there is a lot of back and forth that you're doing in those first uh, couple hours in setting up. Uh, the things that it does that I think is interesting for the combat at least is that you have your normal party of four that you enter in your combat instances with, but there are different zones. So let's just say your party of four, two of your dudes are together, you have Luffy and Zoro, and they have three enemies next to them, but then you have Usopp and Nami, I think, yeah. uh, right. in, in a different zone. And since both of those are ranged attackers, they can... Uh, they will not directly be affected by any AOE attacks. They can't directly be targeted unless that enemy moves to their specific zone. Now, if Usopp and Nami <clears throat> wanted to directly attack them with attack an attack that wasn't ranged, they would now move over to the zone that the specific enemies are in. Um, that being said, for as much strategizing as there can be with a combat, as I showed off in the quick look, I did just have that auto uh battle system set to auto and fast forward for a good chunk of uh my time playing the game um this game's all about cubes and i think that's my favorite part about it is that Mm -hmm. they're just like they're not even shying away of like yo these cubes some of these cubes are little some of these cubes are big these big ones they got your memories in them but it's just like a ps2 memory card but it's it's (laughs) different though so we're gonna relive this scene or this story arc from the uh, anime but it'll be different um and i just think it's so it's interesting that my knowledge of One Piece is pretty much Monkey D. Luffy is a stretchy boy. <laughs> right. A little stretchy boy. And then um, One Piece is the name of the treasure and it's on the Grand Line. And I know this only because of the English dub 
anime's theme song. But no point in my time with this crew of pirates did they seem interested in getting a treasure. So... Uh, are the cubes not treasure? The cubes are their memories. The cubes are and their I mean, abilities. Some say that's the greatest treasure of all. And hey, you know what? Maybe that's what we all need to do. Maybe sometimes <laughs> we just gotta find our inner cubes, you know? Like, we, we just gotta dis disassemble ourselves and figure out we're just a pile of cubes. I, yeah, it's cubes all, all the way are. down. Yep. That's all we are. Yeah, uh, that's, I believe that's string theory. They're replacing it with cube theory, I think. Yes, yes, exactly. I'm also parlaying this to uh, tell everyone that I'm going to start my lecture in quantum dynamics. Yeah, I'm um, going to publish this in a journal, uh, yep. American <clears throat> Scientific uh, Medicine Journal. It's yep, not too late the, to get your ad we, code for the spring semester. We will do this simultaneously while uh, getting him elected mayor. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be a big oh, year. year. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I've moved on from my goal of winning an Emmy, and now I just want to uh, write a journal that yeah. gets put into a scientific <laughs> place. A, a, a journal, that's what they call them. Right? In science. In science, it's what they it's call them. science. Uh, if you're a fan of One Piece, and you don't, ha and um, perhaps you want to relive some of these significant story arcs, definitely check it out. It is a full price title, so if you are at all curious about it, I'd perhaps wait, because... It isn't doing anything drastically new. Um, good chunk of it, though, is voice acted from uh, the Japanese cast. So if you just want to hear those hooligans riff about cubes um, and, and finding cubes and this buff man with long hair that shoots spirit guns, then hey, by all means, check it out. I, I have a question about this kind of game. Yes. Throughout your lives playing video games, uh, Jan, Jeff, have you ever found yourself like entering into a property because a video game came out and came Ooh. into your life rather than going through the anime or the movie or the show first? I'm trying to like think, I probably did uh, learn about Dragon Ball Z, for example, through uh, fan, like, envelope art mm -hmm. that would get sent into magazines. Oh. And I'm like, what is this? Why does every month there's, like, three of these guys with the spiky hair? And then, so when Dragon Ball Z would come on TV, I'm like, uh, or when it finally came on Cartoon Network, I watched it because I recognized it. Uh, but I don't know if I've ever played, like, a game first, and that was, like, an entryway into this. How about you guys? Uh, maybe it got me back into uh, a property that I had lapsed off of. Yeah. Um, for instance, I definitely purposely took a long pause from playing League of Legends, but after checking out Arcane, I like dipped back in for a second and realized that it was a a, a, a poopy puddle that I need to steer clear of. <clears throat> but like, definitely I, uh, like Dragon Ball. Like after Fighters came out, I know folks in the chat are, are citing it, but uh, I definitely dipped back into Dragon Ball and got into Super in a major way because of. Uh, fighter Z right. or fighters being huge. I, I think a lot of people point out like cyberpunk, like pro almost oh, the vast okay. majority of people played the cyberpunk video game before ever playing the cyberpunk uh, tabletop game. Yeah. I don't think there's anything that like, yeah, let's hear it, Jan. Uh, sports games, actually. Yeah, definitely. That's definitely the right. Yeah, but there's not I like canon. The sports. Yeah, but that, like, does that, ca does that count? I didn't realize that that was part of like an acceptable I answer. I think it, like, fits the spirit of the question, yeah. Yeah, because, okay. like, I got, like, I wasn't super into football at all growing up, but then I started playing the NFL street games, and I was like, oh, this is sick as hell. And then uh, I got into NFL for a little bit and lapsed off mm. of it. And, you know, I, I've i seen the homies go and pick up uh, uh, the, their annual Madden releases and stuff, and I'm like, all right, well, maybe I'll just dip in and look at it. Yeah, I think that maybe makes a little sense. What was the one? What was the German World Cup? Was that 2012? Uh, I feel like it was before that, but I don't. Uh, 2006. Geez. Yeah, 2006. It was. It was what? Yeah, 2006. I was oh. like, 2012 is too <laughs> recent. Whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa! I was a freshman in high school. Wait yeah. a wait, 2006. Yeah, we're to decomposing rapidly back in the heart. It's happening. What the fuck? I didn't mean to have this whole podcast this week be about time and the concept of it uh -huh. and us just are facing Welcome a mortality. Week. <laughs> we 2006. Holy shit balls. All right. Well, yes, that's my answer. Uh, 
FIFA World Cup Germany 2006 was like a video game that I played an unhealthy amount of. And mm-hmm. I, it got me so jazzed for the actual tournament. And that yeah. was like the popping off cool. point for me in soccer. Yeah, International like, Superstar Soccer 64 was the same thing for me right before uh, – uh, the the one before Germany, whatever that was, I can't remember now. Um, no one knows. No one. Yeah, knows. it'd be impossible to remember. Uh, but then um, uh, uh, the uh, the other one what was it was it was another sports one. I just had it there. Uh, oh, golf. <laughs> uh, Tiger Woods golf. Oh, I, I, that's I, a good shot. I, mean, I think yeah, I think golf was fine to watch. It would be like be on the TV in the background after playing enough Tiger Woods games. Yeah. I, I, I find myself actively sitting down knowing when the masters is going to start for example and i'm like okay i'm actually i'm gonna watch it on there thursday not just sunday so see that green yeah. jacket yeah yeah i want to see who's gonna win the green jacket i'm very yeah it's it's more entertaining i that is a video games have got to be a major gateway into sports because like learning the rules is like the biggest obstacle and oh, video yeah. games can teach yes, you that's, that's why they so exist fast. right yes, like it's exactly. like half Marketing. the reason they exist yeah yep totally uh, speaking about sports, Jeff Bacalar, you've been checking out a specific car sport, Rocket League so, Knockout. Yeah, so I had no idea about this. The So uh, Dylan was playing Rocket League, and he's like, yo, you got to play me in Rocket League Knockout. I'm like, what are you talking about? And there's a whole other mode in Rocket League that is basically Super Smash. It's like Super Smash Rocket League. Oh. You're all on this like platform, and you have like um melee moves and you can you the object is to what? basically like toss cars off a platform and there's like wait, an wait, incredible fun? I, so i thought it was fun little man was obsessed with it it's i bring this up because it's now gone oh they, it was, no dude they put it so apparently this is the second time it has been around and i had no idea that it was like a come and go mode but it's gone again and like i'm sorry i'm sorry like epic Sionix, whoever it's fucked up that you just do this it's fucked up that you have a mode in the game and this little kid's like dad's totally has opened up a new dimension for me in rocket league it's fucking amazing oh cool show me about it oh, all right we'll play this every day we'll play this every day this is our new binding thing it's gone well, it's you're deleted. just allowed to, to enjoy time with your son, Bacalar, says what Tim the, Sweeney. Like, what the fuck, guys? What are we doing? Like, don't... I don't understand. I, I don't understand the purpose. Show me. Show me the reason. Show me the reason why we do this. Why do we... Are you going to charge for it one day? Is it like a drug dealer thing? Like, what's the deal? It's... I mean, as most things, it's a drug dealer thing, yeah. Uh, it, I mean, All right. So let me they, buy the I, drugs. What are we doing? Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're, yeah they're, they definitely Fortnite does similar stuff. Uh, obviously, they find that like oh, for a living game, part of feeling like it's alive is things have to go away. I and that mm. it definitely feels strange. Uh, but these you games, know, are, these games are are free to play now, right? Rocket League is free to play yeah. now. So so, so how about this? It. Like hey, it's free. You didn't even pay anything. So yeah, we take things away from you. Instead of. Jeff Grubb having to explain it to my son. Yeah, but yeah. Let's get Tim on here. Let's get Tim Sweeney to fucking explain this to my son. I'll text Explain him. this to my son. I don't want, I'm not going to do it. It's not my responsibility. Well, he's like, you, listen, if you, if you wanted to keep it around, you should have helped us defeat Apple in that court case. Hashtag free Fortnite. Did you do your part in the Fortnite wars? Yeah. Hey, well, you clearly did because we lost that case. So this is your right? fault, little man. This is, this is, this is unacceptable. It's unacceptable is what it is. I can't, like, I don't, I don't know. Maybe I've just been out of that loop a little bit. I didn't realize, like, game modes are being actively removed all the time. I, yeah. I'm they sorry, do that with, I'm like, stuff fucking... like COD all the time, right? Like, yeah. Co- yeah. Or maps. I don't know why I'm, I mean, but COD's for adults. <laughs> you could do that. You could do that. You can't do it for kids. You can't be like, yo, your your character's not on the show anymore. He's a fucking uh he's an intangible character that needs to be paid for with DLC money and uh, you have to subscribe to this uh character in this cartoon that you love. Like, get fucked. Are you kidding me? What are we doing? Uh Backler, when's the last time you had public voice on in, in Call of Duty? Oh, I don't even, not even this generation, dude. Well, let me tell you something about the age range of people who are playing Call of Duty. <laughs> that I mean, is also for kids. As far as I'm aware, it's probably a minimum of like eight years old from what yeah. I can gather. Sure. Yeah, fair. Just because like, I just know what my kids' friends are playing and they're not playing yeah. COD. Oh, no, no, definitely not. Like they're playing, you know, <laughs> way worse shit. 
Um, <laughs> they're playing but, the, the COD where you shoot babies in Roblox or something. Like, yeah. yeah. They're playing that new fun uh, Roblox mini game, Toss the Baby. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, fun, fun. Yeah. I don't know. I guess like it gets people going back to the game of like, hey, that mode we really like is back. Let's go check the game out again. Yeah, it's got to be something like just, that. It doesn't yeah, like really this, help with player retention, right? Like, and the spirit of that is so unhealthy. I just don't like. I just don't understand the sense. Like, show me the the monetary sense, even if you have to do it that way, because then I understand you're like brain broken capitalist sort of agenda Expose like what's the deal the dark patterns uh -huh. yeah like don't like take take rocket uh, rocket league knockout out of dark patterns just uh -huh. do me that surgically remove it um and i'll be a happy person i feel so bad and this kid this poor bastard comes home every day goes maybe it's back now oh like, yeah maybe it's probably not he keeps checking he keeps checking to see if his puppy's gonna come home Mm -hmm. Guess what? Oh. Not, not got to go live with, with grandma and grandpa up on the farm. That's it. Your puppy's being denied entry back into your life. Well, maybe he'll eventually forget about Rocket League Knockout. Just like Jeff Grubb, you, and my, I'm going to throw myself into this, uh, we keep forgetting that Fire Emblem is coming out this week. Yes. <laughs> this week. Like, yeah, like Friday, right? It comes out the 20th. Yeah. Friday? Oh, I boy. I can't What's handle that. I don't. I, I've, I've, an embargo is up, so, you know, there are impressions coming out across yeah. the board. Turns out there's a lot of these, uh, there's a lot of these Fire Emblem games, you know? I don't know if y'all know yes, that. Yes, there are. Yeah, there's a lot, and, uh, they, they have been pumping them out for generations, uh, and I don't know, but some, like, I'm really into Fire Emblem games, or, like, I have been since the 3DS Awakening game. Uh, and yet somehow I keep like this keeps slipping out of my mind. And I'm like I, I'm excited about it when I do remember it, but it's not like, oh well, I'm gonna be playing that in a couple days. That's great. It's like, no, I woke up today, I wasn't thinking about it. Someone mentioned, oh, and when that game comes out on Friday, and I'm like, that's that can't be right. Nope, it's right. I uh, I guess the reason the reason I put this on here though is uh, we have we do have Fire Emblem Engage for Spoken coming out a couple days after that. And then uh what was there it was like one other game coming out soon. Oh, maybe it was um that uh, there's uh, Dead SpongeBob Space game. and SpongeBob, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. God, Dead Space is coming. That's the other we're going. Yeah. Uh, so like of those four or five games that are all coming out, I guess the Persona ones are getting ported again. Maybe you guys are gonna play that. What what, what are you guys gonna be playing the next week or so? Oh man, I I really liked in or three houses, and then to an uh -huh. extent, I also liked Three Hopes in a weird way that I was scared I'd get really into Musos. I don't know if I'm good if Engage is gonna have that same hold over me as uh, as three houses did because i really fell in love with at least the golden deer crew i might it might be time to cuff mm, you think it's time to cuff i think it's it, as SZA sings and is all over tiktok it's cuffing season <laughs> um I, I need to see that game for myself so i uh, i probably will be playing some of it but uh uh, I, I don't know. I'm also like curious to see what the critical reception is going to be for Spoken. It feels like it can go in any direction. Yeah, I'm definitely interested in that game um, just because of the sheer sort of like rubbernecking uh, energy it's giving me where it's like, oh, I expect nothing, but I also am inexplicably drawn to it. Well, here, here let's, let's, let's do this. Uh, today's Bombcast the 17th. We'll, the, we'll do one in two weeks. Uh, well, obviously, we'll do one next week, but in two weeks, it'll be the 31st. All these games will be out by then. You guys want to, like, try to guess what the Metacritic's going to be for each of them? Ooh, Ooh I, I do like playing that game. Okay, okay. All right, so I'm, I'm putting chat in charge of actually tracking this. Uh, but, okay, so let's see. Let's, let's start with Fire Emblem Engage. What do you guys think the Metacritic's going to be? I can't, I can't speak to that intelligently. Mm. I'm going to say, like... throw a number out there. You, you just... Oh, I mean, or you could be like, it's going to get delayed. You could be like, pull a little... <laughs> oh. They're actually not going to release it. A, a, is that just like voting is present? Start. Is that yeah. just like voting present? <laughs> yeah. Oh, the medic... It, it, it's, it's, it's an 82. Okay, so it's already oh, okay. actually... Oh, well, there you go. Down. Okay. Right, I, I was going right. to say around 80s, so... Yeah, I haven't there looked. There you go. I, I, that's a little bit lower than I was expecting. All right. Well, fair enough. But then, okay, then for Spoken, what do you guys think that's going to be? 75. Uh, or 72. I, I was going to say 77. Yeah, I'm, I think I'll go lowest. I'll say 71. Uh, all right, then Dead Space on January 27th. Uh, selfishly, yeah, selfishly, I want it to be a high 80, low 90. 
Okay. I'm I'm going to I'll say um 84. I'm going to say 84. Okay. Uh and then uh, the, yeah, SpongeBob the Cosmic Shake just for fun. Why it's, not? It's oh, that's weird. just like you, those are all 75. Right? It's it's like I, an automatic 75. Right, the, all the THQ ones were always like that. Uh, is this one going to be better or worse or exactly the same? So, I, I, yeah, I'll, I'll say it's going to be slightly better based on nothing. I'll say seventy-eight. I might, I, I might go seventy flat. All right, I, uh, flat. all right. There when's we go. that come out again? Uh, January thirty-first. So we'll probably all know right. that that morning. I gotta get you know. Honestly, I'll tell you, little homie could probably review that game better than I can. Uh, get him and Griffin on the case. Yeah, let's yeah. let's like have them team up on Quick it. Right? Junior, like, that's it. <laughs> Scout will produce the show. It'll be someone, fine. Someone make that. Someone make that Nick Junior uh, <laughs> copy cat logo. I love that. I like that a lot. Oh man, Grub, you got two of them there. They, they you can. Mm -hmm. you, you can yeah, they are. They, they won't let me babies. play games anymore. So they've been playing games for me. So yeah, there you go. Bomby <laughs> babies, let's yeah. do it. <laughs> they can. Uh, they can check out Punch a Bunch and everything. Yes, yes, they uh, should. Uh, a game that I'm not quite sure I, I understand. I, I like it to an extent. Um, and I have a question for you, Jeff Grubb, and for the folks listening at home, about the case of the Golden Idol, which I'll just go yeah. ahead and say is the game of the week. Um, how do I get better at these types <laughs> of games? Okay, um... So I think the way I've described this one is it's similar in the brain muscles it's using to a game of Sudoku right. uh, and that you are looking for a piece of evidence that is going to intersect with other pieces of evidence. And then you're going to be able to do the process of elimination from there. Uh, and so uh, you got to be able to lubricate those old muscles. I don't know. Maybe drink one glass of scotch. Maybe that will make you better. Uh, okay. Okay. Maybe have like a corn cob pipe or something. Yeah. Have a houndstooth hat. All right. All exactly. right. Exactly. I think. That, yes. Just like be actively, slightly self medicating the entire time you're playing, like any good uh, detective character in a book. And I think I think that'll really help. I, I don't know. This game really gets me though, because I, I will sit there and obsess. Like, no, there's. The, I know this game's going to put the answer in there. There's no reason I should be guessing here. Just like Sudoku, I should be able to like determine every single answer. And when you finally look, stare at it long enough, and things do click into place, it's it's so so satisfying. And each uh, stage, and I guess for people who don't, don't remember when we talked about this before, this is the game where it is uh, mostly static scenes that you're looking at, mm -hmm. and those static scenes will have. Um, Oh, but then you might see the dead body and he's got a head wound and uh, you look out the window and there's a boat uh, floating in a river and in between every once in a while a horse will run by the, the, the window and the guy's wearing a certain kind of clothes and his other clothes are, are like dirty and they're sitting in, in the pile and then you could find his calendar and he's like, oh, this is what I do. I put on these clothes at this time of day and then I go for a ride. And, uh, and, and it's like, so then you need to fill in by going to search around the world and clicking on things. You add different words, verbs, and nouns to your uh, collection of stuff. And then you need to mm. fill in who did what and who died and how, and usually where. So like by looking out the window and seeing that there's a boat floating in the river, you can look at the map that's in the yes. room and see, oh, well, there's only one part of this town that has water by it. So obviously what, that's what we're looking at. And so that's where the death must have occurred because he was probably riding his horse and he fell off. And it's like, it's really fun to piece that stuff together. Yeah. Um, and if it just, and it's also like nice to like that they are static scenes because it's not like you need to um, get really good at searching a 3D environment. Now, these yeah. are 2D paintings that, you know, vignettes and you're going to be able to collect everything really quickly. So now it just comes down to the game is played inside your head where you need to push these different things up against one another be like okay consider this consider that and what is not just more likely but no what what is what is possible based on all the other things i know and that yeah coming to the solution based on that feels just incredible That's, yeah uh backlog go ahead please no i was just gonna say like i really wish i knew about this game before i watched uh the glass onion <laughs> because um that's a bad movie and, you don't like glass <gasps> onion oh, and, um, i love it that, would you like? You would you it? like that? Did you like Knives Out? I love Knives Out. Yeah, I, I I don't think it's as good as Knives Out, but I like Glass Onion. Yeah, I just thought the Glass Onion like that movie was so needlessly weird and dumb. Like the setup yeah. was so bizarre, and the payoff was just 
the most whelming thing I've ever seen. Uh, that movie's I, not I good. I can see you feeling that way specifically because you're watching things, and I bet most of them you're like, all oh, these people are dumb, and that's just that's just, the whole like, thing. I understand the purpose of making that yeah. movie dumb, right? But yeah. that movie was dumber than what it wanted to be. Okay. Okay. And okay. I feel like no one is saying that. So I'm here to say that, that was a very stupid movie. Uh, and it just seems like a lot of people wanted to take a vacation and have a little time filming a movie. And I appreciate that. You're rich and famous. <laughs> you're celebrity. You want to go away with your friends and go out and make a movie for four months on, a, on an island. That seems like fun. But wow, was that not very good. I thought the first film is excellent. Sure. I thought this one was a supreme letdown um, I, in, in I such it. a big way. Um, you know? But yeah, Golden Idol might be what you're looking for then. Because it's um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there are definitely dumb people in there, but there's also like this um, sort of, I don't want to like spoil anything, but there's this other element in each scene uh, that c connects everything together. Uh, and and that's and that stuff is like oh people are getting their comeuppance and people that yeah. are um, doing something in one scene you might meet them in another scene and you see how the actions uh, that they take come back to haunt them it's it's pretty cool stuff I don't know how are you finding it Jan are are you um and what scene are you on are you like where are you at in the game I feel like I'm near the tail end of the first chapter. Okay. Um, and in that in that specific case you brought up with the the gentleman and and uh, the head wound and the horse, mm -hmm. um, I saw the puzzle pieces in front of me, and then I understood like the like how in detective shows like stuff is just highlighted, and then like the uh -huh. the word jumble floating in front of you, and you're piecing everything together, and I felt like a genius. And then I got to the next case, and I'm like, oh no, there's more things to look at. Oh, this is hard. What well, uh, that guy looks mean. It's his fault. Okay, it's not his fault. Okay, all right, all right. Um, but it's it's neat. I I think I just don't have a lot of experience with like this type of game. Like I really enjoyed the Phoenix Wright series. Um, that being said, I was also really bad at that. Uh, the Curse of Oberdin I found to be mm. too overwhelming for me because of having to navigate that 3D space. Yeah, this this is Curse of the Oberdin without that stuff and without having to be like, oh, I got to find a specific thing. Yeah. You're going to, for I the most part, that. you're going to yeah. be able to find everything, but it's a very similar concept. Yeah, um, it, it definitely feels much more palatable for someone that is relatively new to whatever genre this is supposed to be. <laughs> it's it's got to be just detective game, right? Is it a point whisper. and click? I don't, yeah. I mean, it's point and click for sure, but it's like also it's a point and click detective mystery game. Uh, there, there's there's more and more of these now. Ober Dan, yeah. this the, a handful of others, uh, and so yeah. And I'm boy, I, I've loved all of them so far. So I'm I'm very glad that this is a genre that is growing. I do enjoy that uh, games are getting me to read more because God knows I'm not reading enough. Uh, I mean, re yeah, that's a good way to get Ram it. Reading's fundamental, absolutely. Even the friends write in fundamental. Uh, there, and there, this is not like a big text heavy game though, but there's there is stuff to read and and um, reading it and comprehending what it's saying usually is important because you need to uh, every line is specifically chosen to be readable for a reason and it's going to give you a bit of information that you need. Right. And so you you got to be able to think about it and, and 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 compare and contrast to other things you've read within the level. So you can actually come out with a, and deduce something that's actually going to be useful for you. Yeah, I kind of wish that uh, this game came out in a different part of the year because this was definitely buried underneath like the game of the year pile. Uh, yeah, I, I think this this might have ranked on my list, perhaps like even just based off of being on chapter one and not being super attuned to how to play the game properly or I guess how to deduce better. Um, <laughs> but hey, I'll, I'll work on it. I'm really enjoying it. Uh, is this on Game Pass? I forget. I don't know. Uh, it it it's definitely playable with a controller, so I think it's on consoles. I think, but it's um, I've been playing it on my Steam Deck, and it works pretty good there. Although uh, you'll have to read some of the smaller text on your screen and stuff that might, you might need to zoom in sometimes. I guess I haven't needed to, and but I I'm not um I'm, I'm nearsighted, so it's been fine for me. Uh, but it's also, you know, you pop it on the on the PC. It's the tiniest little game. Uh, it's very easy to run. And I, mm -hmm. I, I have it going right now. I'm just kind of like, 
looking looking at it every once in a while, just thinking about some mysteries and stuff. So, uh, yeah, it's it's a cool. It feels like one of those games. Like, oh, oh yeah, this is the one that uh, when I was a kid, I would have been like, oh, well, I don't even understand what this is, and now it's like all I ever want from a game. <laughs> I, I I just love the idea that you just have multiple mystery games queued up on different screens, just contemplating of like, mm -hmm. I'm going to solve this mystery. What, yeah, put an, what the specific mystery too. is? Who knows? That's the move, you know? Like, uh, you, that's, that's, you keep it up in the background. That's the equivalent of, like, not maybe sleeping on it, but just sort of, like, letting your brain walk around the block, you know? Yeah, and have more, that moment. More, more and more recently, I've uh, been trying to remember things in the moment, and I can't. And then as soon as I stop forgetting about it, I, or as soon as I start, like, like leave it into the side, and I'll go do something else, it'll occur to me. And I'm like, man, what, what, is, what is that all about? Mostly just shit brain, but, yeah, but thanks, other shit than brain. that, what is that about? Speaking about yeah. poop brain, I've been having this thing lately where I feel like I'm speaking very, very slowly, and that I have a lot of pauses, extended pauses during the podcast that I get a little self-conscious of. And then I'll go listen back to it as I edit, and I'm like, oh, no, none of that is existent. Uh, that's weird. What a weird brain thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That I, that one I can't explain for you, bud. Uh, uh, I don't hey, know what that know, is. I'm, I, hey, I'm thinking about how to pronounce clipboard properly. To the the ethics of mm -hmm. adding extra day, uh, and and you know maybe I just need an extra day to ruminate on the Last of Us the TV show. Gentlemen, have either of you watched the Last of Us TV show? Episode one is no. now out. All right. No. No, but, no, <laughs> but no, but my my dummy cod buddies have. Okay. So if you okay. want to get like the dummy cod buddy review, please. Of yeah. The Last of Us. Well, I mean, this just oh, it's three day weekend. I was gonna say, didn't this just air last night? When did you have time to? When were you playing cod? But no, you guys played last night. I'm assuming. Okay, what they say? Yeah. So you would know um, if it was extra day grub. I so know. here's the thing, right? Easy like to remember, easy for easy to remember extra day. It's right if this was an extra day. Um, so just to put like personal uh, um, points of view out there in the open as a disclaimer, I have no desire to see this show. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I don't, I have no desire to see this show because it's just too much. I know the story. I don't want to see, I, I'm pretty sure I got a good idea what happens in that first episode. I don't want to see that. The, whole, the only reason I'm able to like, uh, uh, like consume that kind of narrative is because it was a video game and now you're going to act it out with real people. It's like, no, thanks. I don't need to see it. Okay. It's, it's, a, it's intense. It's not what I'm looking for. Okay. My idiot buddies, they all really liked it. Really, really liked it. I know GameSpot really liked it. Right. I know their yeah. review is like super uh, glowing. People dig this show. People really like it. Is it true that it's only going to be this season and that's it? Uh, I, I doubt it. Have mm. you heard anything about that? Well, this is from the Chernobyl folks, right? And there was only one season of Chernobyl, so I could see Yeah, them. but there was only one Chernobyl, too, so, I mean, there's two Last of Us. Ah, as, you know, they could wait a while for uh, <laughs> yeah, Leona sure, Mormont yeah. to age up, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? You're right, Chernobyl's a never-ending story. It's still, that <laughs> stuff's still breaking down over there. They can tell that, that in the Glory. second season. The, uh, <laughs> the, the funny last, thing, yeah, go ahead. I was just gonna the last time I, I think that this show is doing ratings wise. Uh, when we'll talk about that in the news well enough that they will find some story to put in the second season, very likely the second game, but maybe they'll, they can put stuff in between that and yeah. then elongate it over multiple seasons, which is what I expect them to do. Yeah, I, I no, go ahead, Backler, please. I'm fully happy with this show doing well. I, this is I don't want to see this show do poorly. Someone's like inferring that in the chat. No, I like obviously that's great. And I also am very excited with the way like Neil Druckmann was talking about environmental storytelling and that sort of stuff. Like I think that's super cool because you know, as people who've played both games, you kind of probably seen a lot of the beats of this show already because all the story is played out in cutscenes. You literally put the controller down. And you're like, all right, you're gonna watch the like watch it now. Okay, go ahead, Grub. Uh, going back to the point you made when we we're talking about One Piece, I bet that this has definitely inspired so many people to check out the actual game, especially yes. with Part One. Uh, yeah, being exactly. Re and good news for you in stores now. The Last of Us One remat remake is available for you to purchase at full seventy dollars. Uh, yes, Ooh, that's the reason I. There. The reason I know this 
is uh-huh. because I got two separate text messages over the weekend. I'm sorry, not over the weekend, Monday morning. People who were checking out Last of Us 2, because I feel like there's a lot of people who played the first one sure. and never played the second one. And I got uh, photographs of people's screens where apparently there's a like a pull quote of mine in the trailer for oh. the second Last of Us. And these people who they're like birthday people who you don't talk to ever. And sure, just like, that's what we call them. Right? Birthday text people. And I got that sent to me a couple times yesterday, which I thought was funny. But yes, it is without a doubt resulted in people purchasing those games. I, it's which the is, whole strategy. I mean, exactly. it's that they've been, uh, they saw what happened with Witcher and they saw what, what uh, and, you know, more, they started this since then, but they saw what happened with Cyberpunk and, and, uh, League of Legends with Arcane and whatever that I think that's what that show is called. They, they know it works, and they're gonna. They, that's with, why Sony's making so many TV shows and movies based yeah, on their okay. video and, games. And I'd also like to just put out like a a letter to the public, a little PSA. Oh, no more talking about is The Last of Us the best adaptation. Like, yeah. Just stop. We're done. We can do it now. We figured it out. It's called like people grew up. They realized they should give the same amount of attention to these properties as they should get the right people about the conversations over. There's no more. Is this a good video game adaptation turned into a TV show or movie? Shut the fuck up. The conversation's over. We're done having it because it doesn't matter anymore. It's an irrelevant <sighs> talking point. It's a shitty writing prompt. You say Stop that doing it. You say that back Lar, but as soon as a video game adaptation comes out and it's poorly received those same arguments are going to spin right back up of like video games shouldn't be turned into shows or movies it's, it's just such a brain dead perspective because it's like 90 percent of shit that comes out should not have been done surely you're yeah. going to catch some of those video game adaptations with that wide net so enough enough already okay <clears throat> Uh, no. Yes. No. I mean, yeah, oh, yeah. you said it. I agree. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah. I, just, I mean, I think we're, yeah, we're different. I'm, I'm not interested in, in that conversation. If someone came up to me <laughs> at a party and was like, "Hey, Grub, do you think?" And I'm like, "No, I, I'm gonna walk away now. Thank you very much." <laughs> just so, throw your drink in their yeah. face and how, and how dare you. you speak to me? Yes. I, I exactly. heard there were chips here somewhere, huh? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so uh, awesome. I watched it. I really liked it. I'm also a big fan of everyone involved in the show oh, yeah so Me too. it's 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 really good if you're a fan of the games um there are certain moments there it's like hey you guys pulled that from the video game that's cool that's it's cool. like it's like you said the name of the show but like you just did the thing in the game <laughs> that guy's house is a fire in the game wow <laughs> how, about, how about this jan yes i would love to like watch this with people Sure. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't think I want to consume this by myself on the couch because my wife is already like, she, she preemptively, like, the, after I showed her the trailer, she's like, I just need you to know I'm not fucking watching this show with you. I don't care. She's like, I don't care. She's like, I don't care. I don't care if it's amazing. I don't care if it wins every uh, award. I'm not watching it. So I'm like, all right, maybe I need to watch it with friends who are like, have the same sort of point of view. Uh, regarding this kind of stuff, right? If you want sense? my HBO Max login, just ask. Back <laughs> just right. ask. All right, we'll talk offline. We'll talk offline. <laughs> just stream it in Discord. Come on, let's do it. Uh, um, I, I okay. So I don't know if I'm gonna watch the show. Uh, I haven't really played Last of Us Part One. I played about eight hours. Of Last of Us Part Two. Thought it was fine and enjoyed what I played, and I was done with it uh, at a certain point. Um. I might go back and play The Last of Us now, just based on the amount of hype that's coming off. Oh, of this you battle. had not? I've not. Yeah, I, I just never. It's never been my kind of game. But yeah, uh, yeah, I might give it a shot now. I just, it's like, yeah, it'd be cool to like have that perspective now at this point after everyone's coming to it and sure and yeah. So uh, I don't know. Might look into that. I, I'm. I really want to see like what how the clickers look. I just want to see that. I want. I'm like, oh, how'd they fuck that? I, that there was look? a. Apparently, they used the same mo- mocap performers for uh, to oh, actually play cool. play them in the show as they did in the game. So they're they're gonna move exactly the same. Like that's pretty that's clever. Sick. I like that. That's cool. That's real cool. Yeah. Every now and then, there's just like an, an X button prompt in the middle of the show, and you're like, oh, sick, sick, sick. It's good. It's great. If you if you like The Last of Us or you were at all Last of Us curious. Definitely check out the show. It's cool to see where video game adaptations have progressed 
uh, from careful. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, like, yeah, you you mentioned it. You hit the nail on the head, though, Bacalar. It's like think of like the some of the best. I don't want to say the best, but like some of the highest performing shows from last year. You have. Okay, not The Witcher, but Arcane, the cyberpunk show. Yeah. People love the Castlevania anime. Um, Cuphead cartoon. Right? Cuphead? I mean, the, e- yeah. Even even the like really media. I didn't watch any of it, so I don't really know. But the mediocre Halo show was like <laughs> Paramount TV's best like best rated show or highest rated show or whatever. So right after iCarly, baby. Um, <laughs> I was gonna ask. Like, I feel like there are net gains from virtually all of the shows we've listed. Maybe eh, even Castlevania. But was there any gain from that Halo TV show because I don't remember anything from that other than know. like did they show did, did they show butt did they, they show, show oh, butt? Yeah. oh yeah they showed the master cheeks yeah master mm. ass yeah yeah the, the master cheeks are all over that all, all I know is that uh in the wake of this and everyone praising it for how uh uh like how much it honors the original story and is true to the games uh all the Halo fans are just like walking around like even more depressed because of how not True Aww. to that story, the Halo, <laughs> the Halo show was. So, yeah. I can get behind that. That's, yeah. that's enjoyable. Yeah. Uh, you know what? There's definitely. Well, I don't want to jump the gun, but based off of the numbers in that news story, Grub, there's definitely going to be a season two. Oh yeah. If not three, yes. because Druckmann probably has a lot of ideas that were on the cutting room floor. Yeah. Also, like Walking Dead, like recently came to an end, finally or whatever, uh, and. Uh, as much as like that show was just rotten garbage after you know, the first season, maybe even from the beginning, uh, it the, there are a lot of zombie fiction fans out there, and that's what like propelled that show on to go for ten seasons, seasons or whatever it did, and have three or four spinoffs. Um, they'll, they'll, and that, that audience will just kind of show up for for anything that is like well, like decently made, or even even some of the crap. So the fact that this is like really, really well made. I think it's going to just keep growing. So it's it did big numbers, and it's going to keep growing. They're going to do more. It's yeah. going to keep growing, just like the fungus. Uh, That's I'll, right. In, okay. Inside all of us. Yeah. That's right, mm-hmm. folks. The fungus that fungus is among us. Yep. Fungus yep. that is among us. Well, with that, folks, we're just going to take a quick bricky break, and we'll be back with some news. Perhaps uh, in the meantime, go listen to Toto's Africa. Just just on repeat for a good twenty minutes. We won't be gone that long, but uh, we'll see you in a little bit. I solved it! This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. When you're feeling your best, you can get a lot of great stuff going. But due to unforeseen circumstances and life, sometimes we don't feel our very best. And it can take a while to get back to feeling like our best selves. But working with a therapist can help you feel your very best, or at least get you right back on track. Yeah. Yo, 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 y'all, there is no problem with seeking help and going to therapy. It honestly does help. It's helped me really contextualize a lot of stuff, and it's pretty nice just to dump whatever emotional baggage you've been holding on to. And I know that I feel a little bit of guilt when venting to friends, family, dogs, or whoever else. But don't feel that guilt with a therapist. Dump those emotions, y'all. If you've thought about trying therapy, try BetterHelp. You just got to fill out a brief questionnaire and you'll be matched with a licensed therapist. And if things don't work out with them, you can switch at any time if things don't work out. If you want to live a more empowered life, therapy can get you there. Visit BetterHelp.com BombCast today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash BombCast. Now it's time for the new segment. Oops. There we go. God bless the news and the Bobcast. <laughs> Jeff Grubb. With you. I, yes. And with I've your spirit. Brought, I've brought news. And every story this week is just Africa by Toto. Here we go. Seven times in a row. No, sorry, sorry. Uh, the 2022 NPD Roundup got posted by the NPD Group. Uh, there are some details here for December as well as for the whole year from Matt Piscatella over there at the NPD Group. I figured I would just read some of his comments here. It helps illuminate exactly what happened. Let's start here with 
U.S. consumer spending on video game content, hardware, and accessories totaled $7.6 billion in December 2022, uh, an increase of 2% when compared to a year ago. Video game hardware spending grew 16%, offsetting declines in both content and accessories. uh, That was down 1% and down 2% respectively there. Uh, the December growth b- brought full year 2022 spending to 56.6 billion, 5% below 2021 levels. Gains in spending in hardware and subscription content were offset by declines across other areas of spending. Factors impacting 2022 spending included continued supply constraints of console hardware, a relatively light slate of new premium releases, and macroeconomic conditions. Now, I think we can also easily compare and contrast where we were at 2021 to 2022 in terms of people still sheltering at home throughout the entirety of 2021 for the most part that changing in 2022 and yet uh, uh only a five percent drop seems like pretty good compared to like where it could have been uh that's still up pretty high compared to pre-pandemic pre-pandemic numbers so a lot of people got their consoles and have continued to play with them throughout 2022 uh, spending on video game content fell 1% in December when compared to a year ago to $5.5 billion. Growth in digital content spending on non-mobile platforms could not offset declines in mobile, yeah. subscription, and physical software spending. The December performance slightly improved full-year content spending, within, which ended the year down 7% versus a year ago to $47.5 billion. Uh, growth in subscription content spending was exceeded by declines across all other segments. So... More people going to going to subscriptions, and that seems to be the one bright spot at the very least. Um, in terms of hardware, PlayStation Five was the best selling platform both in December and for the year in total, and that's in dollar sales. In terms of just raw units sold, the Switch was number one for December and for the year. It puts uh, Xbox Series X and S in, in third for both those categories. As usual, though, all the consoles have sold pretty well uh, throughout 2022. Uh, and they seem like they're going to all, all of them are going to continue that mo- momentum, except the switch, which is like declining slowly year on year. Finally, uh, that's kind of just begun happening this year, probably will continue happening next year as well. And then you can probably look forward to a new switch after that. Uh, in terms of the best selling games of the year, uh, you guys want to guess what with number one was? I'm actually surprised that it was. Uh, I, I had already seen a little bit this chart. Um yeah, so this yeah, is I was genuinely surprised that this was number one. Yeah, number one, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. That means number two, Elden Ring. Uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, I believe, probably just pulled that out at the... Because uh, I don't... I, I'm trying to remember what November's uh, numbers were. Uh, if it um, immediately went to number one or if Elden Ring held, held on to number one for the uh, previous 12 months. Um, but either way, it's like, yeah, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, once again, coming out number one for the year. Uh, Elden Ring, number two, then Madden NFL 23 at number three, God of War Ragnarok, Lego Star Wars Skywalker Saga, Pokemon, FIFA, Pokemon Legends, Arceus, uh, uh, Horizon 2 Forbidden West, and MLB The Show 22 rounding out the top 10. Um, Mm -hmm. It goes up to the number 20, the top 20, but a lot of those games in the top 20 uh, from 11 to 20, pretty familiar uh, perennial hits, things like uh, Minecraft and uh, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. It's fucking Vanguard. Like, I can't understand. I know it's the norm. I just can't understand it. I mean, you're saying Vanguard sales being, uh, it's, so it's number 12 uh, for the top 20 uh, of, of 2022. Is that what you're saying? It's pretty high? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's actually pretty low for a previous yeah. year's okay. Call of Duty. Oh. Actually. Okay. Usually they would be actually, I'm pretty sure most of the time they would be in the top 10. Um. I think that's right. That's so, yeah. But still, like that shows you an off year Call of Duty still in the top 20 and top 15. Uh, that's very strong. It outsold uh, other new games like Gran Turismo 7, Kirby and the Forgotten Land, uh, NBA 2K23, although that doesn't include digital for that game yeah. specifically, not Kirby either. Uh, but, but yeah, I mean, Mario Kart 8 did outsell it. Uh, Call of Duty Vanguard, and that does, and that's Mario Kart 8 without its digital sales. Wow. So maybe Call of Duty fucking... Vanguard actually is kind of really hurting there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, these the, most of these things are are as we expect them. It's not too surprising Call of Duty at the top. It's not surprising the industry's losing a little bit of, of steam coming out of the pandemic. Uh, but for the most part, like the systems are selling, the games are selling, they're maintaining most of the momentum, and mm-hmm. they're well set up for what should be, in terms of the quality of games released in 2023, a much bigger year. Uh, although there probably won't be as, anything as big as Elden Ring, right? No. Yeah. And anytime we we talk about these NPD numbers, 
I'm always really shocked to see Lego Star Wars so high. Yeah. I feel like personally that game came and went even though despite really liking it and they did put a lot of love and care into it. I j guess I just didn't assume, didn't assume that the appetite for a Star Wars game, it is a Lego Star Wars game, was, was that high. It's, uh, it was, it just crushed. It was a huge, huge hit. Uh, it really is the, like, in terms of the way it sold, I have said this before, but the Elden Ring of kids games, it was just, everyone was playing it. They, uh, families were just getting it, uh, pr pretty much throughout the year. It was always in the top 10, top 20, um, every month since it came out. And yeah, it, it, some of these, sometimes a family game can really do that. I think, um... In terms of what could happen in 2023, people, some people are expecting that Hogwarts Legacy game to do a similar. Uh, I'm like, I'll be very surprised if it does that, but I guess it comes down to w whether or not it's any good. Um, but like, people are expecting similar things. And I'm like, I don't know. Lego Star Wars to Skywalker Saga is just so accessible, and I don't see that Hogwarts game being the same thing. Uh, yeah. Regardless of the people <laughs> or the person responsible for Harry Potter at this point, but. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't know. I just don't know if that's if uh, Lego Star Wars: The Skywalker Saga saga is an outlier, or if it's something that could be repeatable every year. Um, if it was, I, mean, I guess they would probably try to put out uh, a, a sequel to this game really fast. But that, this game took them a long time, so maybe that's not possible. Yeah, I guess it's also distance enough from the original set of Star War, Lego Star Wars games that um, people that wanted those annual releases were like, "Oh man, oh it's back, <laughs> sick." Mm -hmm. Um, I th are they still on a pretty like frequent cadence for like the the DC stuff they were doing? Because I know that those games were being churned out, yeah, for a I, good chunk of time. They, yes, they were doing a ton of those really frequently. I don't know when the last one is. Okay. I, I would just so I would just be guessing, but it doesn't. I don't know. If, uh, part of this like this felt like the culmination of the Lego games. But there's no way they're done. Like this is what they do. But there was also like issues with like Traveler's Tales and Lego, and it always seemed like maybe Lego would take their business elsewhere. Um, and it's like, oh man, I, w I wonder what happens next. But after this game being such a success, that also seems very unlikely. So maybe they gotta just sort of step back, rethink everything, and then they'll, they'll come back with a lot more of those DC Marvel games. There's Lego Marvel games, stuff like that. That, that all seems possible to be, like pick up steam again going to the next generation. Um, Lego Shaolin monks. Cringe. Let's do it. Let's make it happen. Oh. Um, so there is no, or there's not supposed to be a new Call of Duty in 2023. So what do you guys think will be the top selling game of the year? Zelda, if it comes out? No. Mm, yeah, no? But yeah, I, I don't no. think it's coming out, though. Oh, okay. Oh, you, you think Zelda is going to get delayed out of 2023? Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, it's definitely possible. But, I mean, like, but, you, I feel like that bet's going off at, like, minus... 200 i mean come on right well, i like, mean they've given it a real date but that doesn't mean anything these days does it I, I i will be surprised if it doesn't come out now it's been delayed so many times but yeah yeah i, I guess it's possible i, I think it, i think it probably zelda will be the best-selling game of the year uh but there's him you know, there's an opportunity for something to come along and surprise us i don't know if Armored Core 6 comes out, is that the, get the From Love again and becomes the top selling game? Probably I, not, right? Yeah, I mean, maybe it gets top 20, but I don't think it gets anywhere near the top. Yeah, it's sure. not going to be top 5, I don't think. I, no. it, it could be a huge hit, but yeah. Also, I don't think it's coming out this year, so. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I don't like, I'm trying to think of anything else. Like, uh, maybe it's going to be Resident Evil 4 Remake. Maybe that's going to be like a surprise. Yeah, like, no, I think that sounds right. Seller. You sure. think Final Fantasy 16 might? chart really high yeah final fantasy 7 remake was like five million copies six million copies after your first year uh but final a fi like a, a true blue new final fantasy sequel seem and especially one that's like um seems so important to the playstation 5 i i could see that one being like a breakout hit again the way final fantasy needs yeah mm -hmm. um yeah mad mad it might just be mad i think uh, i think no spider-man 2 is a good one yeah Red i Ball, actually don't sure. know about spider-man 2 i feel like Based off of like friends that I've talked to and me mentioning like, oh, they're going to have Spider-Man 2. And it's just, I think the open world fatigue might be getting to some. And I know that Breath of the Wild 2, and I'm saying that that's going to chart really high, but it's like, it's different because we it's don't get Zelda Breath that often. I, right. Breath of the Wild was a deconstruction of the open world anyhow. So it was like right. always in conversation with that and really smartly responding to that. Uh, but I mean, I... 
I mean, Spider-Man 2018's weakest elements were definitely what you were supposed to do in the open <laughs> world. Absolutely. It, yeah. What, swinging around was perfect. The, the actual the look of the of the open world, exploring it for the most part, that stuff was pretty satisfying. And, and obviously the movement is second to none. It's the best. Um, but the, I, well, the, I hope that they've like really thought about that stuff and come to Spider-Man 2 with a lot of like rethinking about what can yeah. we do to make be, like actually doing Spider-Man stuff be more interesting. The irony being that, like, uh, Miles Morales was a kind of almost watered down, uh, you know, uh, Matt Barf situation, and yet kind of, as far as like a complete package is concerned, is almost like flowed a little better, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As a result think, of that. Yeah, I guess, um, absolutely. I think, the, I think uh, for, the, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead about I, I was going to say, I think for top uh, 23 games, um, you could probably make an argument for maybe Street Fighter Six. Oh, yeah, um, I think I feel like that one has a chance to like be um, a renaissance for fighting games and like fighting game interest. Yeah, uh, I think I think I'm obviously Pikmin for Four. Uh, <laughs> I think I think you're uh, on to something and, with and at, Diablo with, with Street Fighter Six though, because I feel like there is such an appetite right now, maybe in the circles I travel in similar circles to to yours backlar because i know a bunch of key people that have come out as keyboard pervs mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and and mm -hmm. uh they're they're tick talkers huh see what i did there? we're among you we're among <laughs> you we um, are among you that more hussein <laughs> recent recent keyboard perv. oh no mm -hmm. uh, we're among you we're among you that i feel like the industry for stuff like hit boxes could quickly yeah. blow up uh especially for folks that um uh, may not be super acquainted with playing a fighting game with a controller or don't want to shell out for a huge joystick that they could just get like a keyboard hitbox type of dealio, especially if they can make it themselves um, and throw some, I don't know, fancy lights on it and people mm. will go ape shit. Mm -hmm. And how? I'm, I mean, listen, that's the life I'm ready to live. <laughs> uh, we'll see how many people actually end up choosing that lifestyle though. Um, a, a Starfield, of course, is yeah. one that if it if the reviews are good, if all the things like line up correctly, it gets that. Yeah, um, I think if it boots up, it's pretty much. <laughs> well, I mean, that, if it boots up, it's going to be a pretty good thing for a Bethesda game, absolutely. Yeah. But it's like you know, if it, it has any of that shine of Skyrim, uh, it has to potentially do big numbers. Now, of course, it's also going to be on Game Pass, and so some people will just right up not like straight up not buy it. Of course, so that's going to hurt its like sales numbers, I guess. Um, but I don't know. It's I bet it still could sell a ton of copies because if it does well on Steam, it could blow up. So uh, I, yeah, we'll see. I, I, I think it's going to be a pretty wide open year, though. Yeah, uh, I like that. Yeah, me too. I'm like it'd be uh, usually you need a rock star game for a Call of Duty not to finish at the top, but <laughs> uh, that won't happen, and neither will Call of Duty. So yeah, wide open year for the first time in quite some time. All right, let's move on to uh, Ubisoft. Is is in quite a mess. They reported their financials, and things are just not looking very good. Uh, it is reducing its financial outlook as it continues reeling from rising production costs and diminishing returns from its biggest franchises. It said it is facing surprisingly slower sales of its games. So in response to that, it's going to cancel three games, and that's in addition to the four games it previously Oof. canceled in July. Uh, it is on top of that, it's planning $200 million in reductions of co in reduction of costs. Uh, that's going to take many forms. But it's going to include things like, oh, if someone leaves a team, Ubisoft is not going to rush to replace them. More, more, than, more than likely, they are just going to let that team naturally sort of shrink itself and let people leave and split up the, the responsibilities among the, the team that is remaining there. Um, wow. And it, in addition to all of this, the company's delaying Skull and Bones again. Uh, a new date will be released very soon, according to a tweet uh, from Ubisoft. Uh, Ubisoft problems are, of course, many fold. Like, if we try to like figure out like what is going on here, it is a massive company. It's got somewhere between fifteen thousand and twenty thousand employees. Um, it, even with that infrastructure, though, it it doesn't have that one big cash flow game like a Grand Theft Auto Online or um, a FIFA Ultimate Team. It, it doesn't have that. It's got Rainbow Six Siege, which it has sort of brute forced into being a really successful live service game but not so successful that it can just pay for everything else and of course it's like that's such an easy thing to say yeah just make a game that makes endless money like <laughs> yeah just do that there is no one they, they've tried it's not worked out for them they are like their next plan is like to turn 
uh, Assassin's Creed into that, and we'll see if they're going to be able to pull that off. But in the meantime, they're going to have to just keep sort of plugging away, making game after game. And the real bad news there for Ubisoft is there's no clear path in toward uh, toward making everything a safe bet. Everything's still going to be very hit driven. So they're in, they're in some. Uh, I, I want to say they're in trouble. Yeah, they're in a, they're in some trouble for sure. But they're in like the kind of trouble where if you're a publicly traded company, you always need to be growing. And instead, they're just sort of. Um, floating around the same value and that's you kind of can't be there that doesn't mean they're going to suddenly go bankrupt and, and disappear or something like that and stop making games that's not really a risk but they are definitely at a risk of um like big changes changes in leadership uh things and you know some, some stuff that probably should happen anyhow but that doesn't mean the change of leadership is going to be positive in terms of the workplace toxicity or anything like that it could get worse who knows but they are definitely at risk of like the everyone in charge there just sort of losing their job because there is no real obvious future for Ubisoft. Uh, where are you guys at with, with like Ubisoft games? You guys think you guys see a pathway forward for them? It's tough. It's tough. Yeah. Um, Cause it's almost like all of a sudden when you really like, you know, turn over the rock, you're like, Oh my God, it really is not great here. Uh, I, uh, I think a lot of it is um, maybe an inability to kind of like, secure uh the 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 longer runway of like future ip that other publishers have been able to do mm -hmm. um i think there's a lot of uh perhaps you know mediocre uh properties games that never really got uh going in terms of uh development and and, and saw the light of day i think there's just a lot of that right like a lot of just like failure to deliver i think that has really um compounded and added up to sort of like find them in the situation they're in yeah i don't know what they can do to something like rainbow six siege to make it more easily accessible for your random to just jump into on like a free weekend or something because the planning phase and the people that are really into siege are really into siege yeah that, you kind of need a yeah. sherpa you need someone to like bring you in there and show you around yeah absolutely and and it doesn't like i feel like with something like destiny 2 you can kind of piece together your own fun and, and get going into destiny 2 versus something that seems impenetrable at this point like rainbow six siege even if i had a sherpa i, I have that pressure of like i'm going to let down my friend and then oh, yeah. all of these other people yeah, I remember I would I uh, played Siege and uh, I was definitely like just getting the hang of it. I was playing with a bunch of people who played all the time, and I came around the corner and shot one of my teammates. And it was like the one person on our team who wasn't in our friend group, and he got so mad. It was yelling at me and all my all my friends who played a lot. Like I uh, just calmed down and they like spoke the Rainbow Six ling ling language. They're able to explain. No, he's a noob. It's okay. He's a games journalist. He doesn't know what he's doing. Uh, <laughs> they don't actually play games. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I was like. It was like that situation and i'm like oh man this is yeah this is stressful I really, enjoy, I really enjoyed my time with siege but like that stuff's stressful but i mean even like they they so siege is a success though they do yeah. make money from that it's it is just not it doesn't seem like there's a, a way to turn that into an even bigger thing it just needs to be what it's going to be so you try other stuff but then the other stuff is rainbow six extraction a game that came and went and everyone completely forgot about and they've had a lot of those they've also um had, well, they've had Assassin's Creed, and that was successful for years and years, but it's not like the every Assassin's Creed is growing one after the other now. They have ups and downs, where for a long time it was. Every Assassin's Creed we put out annually would be bigger than the one before, and that's, that's so that's not happening anymore. So, that, well, you know, we'll try to build a new franchise so we can spend more time between Assassin Creed's, uh, Assassin's Creed. Uh, okay, well, we'll try Watch Dogs. Well, Watch Dogs didn't exactly take off. So they, they've just been, like, fizzling and, and stumbling and having false starts for a decade straight yeah. and a lot Same of stuff there's a lot, right? yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah and there's a lot of stuff in their graveyard like far, uh, hyperscape and um like for honor had some time but like there's and there's no for honor oh. two it's like what what are they doing over there yeah no idea yeah. i also don't know how they could i was trying to think of how they could perhaps pivot an assassin's creed online mode to be similar to uh, a gta online just because folks love their role playing and i guess that's how Red Dead Redemption 2's online is also picking up uh, popularity. Yeah. It's just like people in role-playing servers. I don't know if with Assassin's Creed you can do or have as many shenanigans as you can with those games. Yeah. It's, um, I mean, they're going to try. Uh, we'll see what those 
that Assassin's Creed live service game in, ends up looking like and uh, what the online interactions are uh, available to players. But uh, yeah, you're right. I mean, there's a certain attraction of GTA, and that's why that just made so much sense for GTA Online. Uh, GTA Online, or at least it's, in retrospect, it makes sense. Um, Gatau. Gatau, yes, Gatau. Mm -hmm. uh, Please, and then, Gatau. And then Rodaro, uh, Red Dead Redemption Online Rodar is... Rodaro Gatau. These are new Rodaro JoJo Gatau. enemy stands. Yes, um, exactly. <laughs> that that, that's, uh, that like has found its place by sort of just um, being the one alternative to people who are like, oh, we have, okay, we've played GTA Online role-playing for so long. What's a, a different thing we could do? Well, the only other one is this Red Dead Redemption <laughs> Online. I kind of think it's like sort of just defaulting into that space. And, and Assassin's Creed is not going to get that same benefit. No. no, and like, you know, like you said, not to reiterate, but like, there's a good three to five franchises for, for the better part of two decades that were literally the same game, just like a different skin, right? Yeah. Uh, th and and sometimes like, exactly true, because that was like what Far Cry Primal was to Far Cry totally. 3, right? It was the same map, but it but was just... Even, even across yeah. IPs, though, right? Like, you yep. would have like Assassin's Creed and, you know, all the... Like I said, the map barf games. I mean, like, it's just... Look, you make a Prince of Persia, a Sands of Time 2... And I will, I will get back on board. Yeah, I mean, I even get, even that remake that they're trying to do with that though is in trouble, and they've had to delay yeah, it and it, reboot it. Yeah, I yeah, it's I, you know, I don't know. I think I think uh, to your point of like the impossible task of being asked to grow and grow and grow is that it is impossible. It is it is not a thing you can do forever. Part of that comes with like acquisitional stuff and like getting and making the right preemptive. Um, you know, moves to better prepare yourself for the future. And I don't, if that has happened, I obviously it's, it's a not shown itself in any apparent way and B uh, not, you know, made enough of a, uh, uh, a sort of like move in, in the industry where people are like, Oh, the, the market will allow for like that anticipation. Right. Or that kind mm -hmm. of, um, you know, vibe. And it's just not there. It's just not there. Uh, they do have, um, some games coming out. Uh, that Avatar game is coming out. And, okay. okay. Got, excited? Yes or no? Um, um, Jan? Uh, <laughs> as as someone that is all in on Way of the Water, no. I so. <laughs> he's literally breathing underwater, and yeah. he's like, nah, nah I'm good. Uh, Massive is, instead of making a new uh, division, they are making a Star Wars game. Uh, that sounds promising to me. I'll, okay. I'll show up for that. Sure. Uh, and then, and then we have Assassin's Creed Mirage coming out pretty soon, and that's going to be their s smaller scale, sort of traditional Assassin's Creed, as opposed to the giant sprawling RPGs they've had in, mo in more recent years. That sounds very well. I, I welcome that. Give me that right now. That sounds real good, or at least it sounds potentially real good. Uh, I don't know. What do you guys think? I don't know, man. We've we've talked in the past about leadership at Ubisoft, but. Now, especially, they seem directionless and people at the top don't know. Hey, you, we could argue that they haven't known what, what the fuck they're doing. Uh, yeah. But now, especially, and, you know, we uh, game this morning last week, we talked about the memo that went out. Uh, to put the blame on your employees mm -hmm. is such a chicken shit move. Um, yep. and, and does not scream a leader. Uh so, oh, boy, I I would not want to be there right now. Also, I that's that's got to be terrible for the morale. Yep. So, yeah, that, like, what that, do you expect? Like, what the fuck? Yeah, that memo came from Yizgimo. It was sent out to employees at Ubisoft, and it read basically what what Jan said. Like, uh, hey, um, we we are gonna figure these things out, but more now than ever, I need you all to like w work harder. And to um, ch check your spending and initiatives really closely so you don't spend too much of my money. That's my money. Work harder and don't spend my money. And yeah, uh, it didn't say much of anything about here. here's my vision for the future and here's how we're going to turn things around. Uh, the, the, there aren't, because uh, there hasn't, there haven't been answers to those questions and there continue to not be. And so, yeah, a real morale breaking sort of, it comes, you guys need to solve this while I continue cashing my CEO checks. And no, no one wants to deal with that. No one wants to read that. And people haven't wanted to really work at Ubisoft for, for quite some time now. And this is not going to help with that. And, and, but also it seems like they don't, they don't care because they, they don't want to be hiring people because they want to be cutting costs. And that just seems like a recipe for disaster. And, and that's really why Ubisoft is in trouble because if they can't 
keep people around and they have no interest in replacing people that they need. Um, yeah, these games are just going to keep taking longer and longer and it's going to make them yeah, more expensive in the end. And if they can't see that now, well, we'll be back here probably having a similar conversation about Ubisoft in, in, in the same terms next year. All right. Uh, High on Life and Rick and Morty creator Justin Roiland is facing charges of domestic violence. Uh, this came from an NBC News report that finally caught wind of allegations against Justin Roiland uh, in regards to a 2020 incident where he is facing one count of domestic battery with corporal injury and one count of false imprisonment by menace, violence, fraud and or deceit. Uh, the involved case uh, includes um, or involves an unnamed Jane Doe that Royland was dating in 2020. Uh, and jo Justin Royland's uh, attorneys say, we look forward to clearing Justin's name and helping him move forward as swiftly as possible. Now, these are allegations, um, but it's the kind of stuff where like you read this and it's like it just it's everywhere and it happens. And sometimes red flags go off for a reason. And. Here we, here we are. Uh, I, I, I mean, Tam said it when, we, when I talked about this on Game Us Mornings on Friday. Uh, it's real easy not to be a shithead, and yet everyone is. It just seems like everyone is, and I kind of uh, real frustrated. But also, I like I put down high in life. I don't know what else. I know that's not helping this Jane Doe in any way, but it just like you know turned me off of the game. Of course it did. So uh, I don't know. I, I just kind of wish people would stop being shithead, guys. Yeah. The the one. It's a very hard silver lining to find um, among this, but with when stuff like this comes out, more people that have been affected do feel the courage to be able to stand up and, and realize that they're not alone in this instance. Yeah. So, you know, I, I definitely feel for the Jane Doe that was affected, but the thing is that she may not, they may not be alone, and, and now there may be more people to stand with them in, in this yeah. instance, if, if that's any silver lining we can take away. Yeah, these, uh, these things usually don't happen in sort of a, a vacuum. They usually are patterns. So, uh, and I'm speaking generally there, not about anyone specifically. Uh, these are all, as we said, allegations. Uh, the, Callisto, the Callisto Protocol, excuse me, isn't selling the way the publisher expected. Um, that's according to a report at news site MK Odyssey. The sci-fi survival horror game did not sell enough uh, in, in order to make its publisher Crafton happy. Uh, Crafton, of course, the parent company of the PUBG Corporation. Uh, and in response to that, Crafton is now lowering its financial targets for the year. Uh, Crafton apparently expected sales of around 5 million copies. Instead, Callisto Protocol racked up closer to 2 million copies sold. Well, that might seem like a pretty big gap, and, and, uh, and that 2 million is a pretty good number. It's not exactly how these things work. Like five, They expected 5 million because they spent a lot of, monkey, a lot of monkeys and a lot of money on this game. Apparently, they, well, they spent around... Well, there's a problem, Grub. Yeah, they spent yeah, monkeys right on there. this. That's monkeys. what you did here. Oh, man. There's we, monkeys we in all here. Gonna learn. <laughs> they spent around 165 million dollars and monkeys on this game. Uh, that's a big time budget. Now that's also just kind of what games of this scale cost now. And in response to that, yeah, you need to sell a lot of copies to make that make sense. Um, I, I also don't think five million is completely out of the question for a triple A. Uh, a survival horror game in a post Resident Evil world, and when you see games like Death Stranding come along, it's a, that's a new IP, and then that sells like five million copies in the first year. This game's pro probably not going to get anywhere close to that. Now, of course, the the fatal flaw in this case might be it's not a very good game, right? Yes, that is that's probably a high I'm high sorry. contributor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but but you can also, I mean, 165 million dollars. You can also see the um. The argument for pushing it out the door, right? Because it's like, well, it's not going to get cheaper. Uh, right, we're yeah. in, well, we could delay it for six more months and uh, two hundred million dollars, and now we need to sell six million copies. Uh, Are we really going to do that? Uh, it's they're between a rock and a hard place. Making games is very hard. This is one of the reasons why. Um, but do you guys think this game ever had a chance of doing five million copies? No, strictly based off of the title. <laughs> Right. And and it's like too stupid. It was the glass I, onion of video games. Yeah, I, I don't want to judge yes, nice. a video game by a title, but then like you know, you're you're your normal, your normie at the big box retailer, and you read the Callisto Protocol on the shelf, and you're just thinking, what the fuck is the Callisto Protocol? Yep. It's I I think uh, I don't know how much this uh, plays into it as well. Uh, Drum Kid ninety two in the in chat brings it up. It's like. They're also this game's also incredibly close 
release calendar wise to Dead Space Remake, which is like a strange, you know, set of circumstances. Um, also a great name, Dead Space. Huh. Got it. It is a good name. It is good. It's a great name. Uh, and I think, uh, look, I, I, I don't know. I, I, it's, it's tough to really like uh, qualify what kind of tangible effect all that has on, on game releases and sales and whatnot. But the timing of all that, I can't see it being overly beneficial to the Callisto Protocol um, for what it's worth. Uh, the EU is throwing up another roadblock for the Microsoft plus Activision deal. Uh, the European Commission, which is uh, investigating the deal and whether or not they're going to permit it to go through, plans to issue what, it's, what, it, what it calls a statements of objections. Uh, and this will be in regards to Microsoft attempting to acquire Activision for $69 billion. Um, and this is, co- this is coming from a report uh, via Reuters. Uh, in, a statements of, 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 in the statements of objections, the commission can voice its specific co- concerns about the deal, and Microsoft will have to respond to them and deal with those. And that could be a part of the, um, uh, the, the pathway towards them actually not letting the deal go through and, and denying it. Uh, Microsoft was attempting to offer concessions to the EU specifically to avoid getting this statement from, from the EC. Uh, but apparently the European Commission wanted to raise its objections before Microsoft had a chance to file its concessions because it wanted to get them out there and then deal with uh, Microsoft on those terms. Uh, the big reason Microsoft wanted to avoid that other than this this being this, you know, just cause another thing they had to deal with is it probably will prolong the process of w- before uh, Microsoft can actually close the deal. So uh, but the EU, the EU's uh, commission needs to provide its decision by April 11th. Um, it seems like it's going to take up all of that time. And Microsoft wants to close the deal with Activision by June. That's looking less and less likely. Now, Microsoft does seem like it's going to keep with this and keep trying to, to fight and get the, get the deal through. Uh, but, boy, that timeline is, is starting to get pretty scrunched. It's unlikely to go through by June. Uh, ah. that, there's, there's our natural update on that. What's up? I, I, I thought this was just set in stone. It's going to happen. But, uh, hey, look, people, uh, people doing their jobs. Mm -hmm. It was always going to be, it was always going to get this uh, level of scrutiny because it was just so massive, but it also feels like, I mean, if Microsoft keeps fighting it, it probably still will go through. Uh, it's just it, we'll have to see what uh, Europe, the European Union's uh, um, objections are. The EU has a much better, stronger footing to stand on than the FTC. The, F- the reason the FTC was never probably going to, uh, even though they did, was probably never going to uh, throw up a case is because its case was always weak based on its its mandate. Like it had to, mm. it was very worried about monopolies, very worried about consumer uh, protection, and that the deals. There's no clear way to understand how the deal would affect that stuff one way or the other. Um, but the EU can is much broader and it can worry about the the, the specific players in the marketplace. Uh, we'll see. That this is all. This was always going to be the hardest one for Microsoft to clear. We'll see if they're able to actually do anything with this once the once the statement of objections comes out. Uh, all right, moving on. Leaked images reveal a Suicide Squad battle pass. Uh, a recent test build of Suicide Squad included references to a battle pass for the game. An image leaked. VGC was able to confirm that the game apparently will have a battle pass. The battle pass will be just for cosmetics for your characters. Guys, I hate this anyhow. I just, I'm tired of... Uh, I don't, I already, like... And like trying to understand why I should be excited for for Suicide Squad, other than hey, it's it's Rocksteady. They make really really good games, right? And so uh, yeah, I guess I, I don't know. Maybe it's there's some diminishing returns there for me. Um, but it's like this is gonna be a four player game. You're playing this as Suicide Squad. All right, is it gonna be a big live service game? Well, no, maybe kinda. It's gonna have battle passes. I'm like, okay. I, I, that's just not the sell, the selling point, and I'm, they're not treating it like a selling point. Right. But when I see it, I feel a little bit more of an urge to be like, I'm just gonna pass on this one. I don't know. Well, how do you guys feel? I don't. I don't know if it's like a a pass before delivery kind of thing, but uh, yeah, it's just it's nudging me in that direction is all. Yeah, I mean, look, there's something to be said for like the fact that like you have to actively come out and be like, yo, um, it's it, but it's cosmetics. Like you, you have to, you have to do the sort of damage control before it's ever even uh, sort of ingested. Which, yeah, that's what you have to do because it turns off a lot of people. Um, <clears throat> I, 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 I still am curious. I think the pedigree of rocks uh, of rock city is more interesting to me, uh, and and kind of seeing how they take what uh, you know what this franchise is. I, I'm not interested in this franchise in this in the sort of IP rather. But I'll, I'm curious to see what they did with it. Um, 
So I guess it could be worse, but not by a lot. I think it's funny that the image leak leaked ha uh, has them queuing up for a level called Worst Laid Plans, which is exactly what this is. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, I kind of feel like a battle pass could come to a uh, um, one of these PvE games. Eventually, I just, and I, I suppose the, even in that case, the planning would have to start pretty early. Who knows if this is going to launch with the game on day one or come later? Uh, we have no idea. I, Either way, I'm just like, I, I'm very much wait and see with this game. And the more I see, the more I'm like, ah, I'm actually good. I'm good. I don't know. Does this come before or after the James Gunn edict that video game DC uh, properties will factor into the overall canon? Yeah, well, they, they started this forever ago. So, yeah, this is uh, definitely the kind of thing where all this stuff would have been factored in before that. So uh, they're not going to make any changes based on that. That'll be the kind of thing where it's like, oh, the games we start seeing three, four, five years from now will have that stuff in mind if if James Gunn is even still in charge at that point. And even, oh. even if that stuff will even matter. I, I mean, I like James Gunn, but the, I mean, the Warner Brothers is such a fucking hot mess. Who knows what will happen? <laughs> Uh, okay, let's uh, keep moving along here. Metal Gear Rising voice actor is hinting at something. Uh, Raiden? Raiden? I, I, can, I never know which one. Ooh, baby, uh, it's Raiden. Raiden voice actor Quentin Flynn is teasing something in replies to his uh, cameo page that he posted on Twitter. Fans asked about the potential for more Metal Gear Rising games. Flynn responded with the following. Stay tuned for things to be announced in the coming weeks. Now, guys, this is a voice actor. I kind of feel like... Um, Take voice actors and performance capture actors uh, words about the things they're working on with like a grain of salt. Sure. There's only so much you could put into that. I think actors are very likely to be a good source of leaks because they don't care, <laughs> but they don't care. So they also don't necessarily always know exactly what is happening with the stuff they're working on. He could have done his voice for um, like a cup of noodle commercial that has Raiden <laughs> in it or something, right? Like who, who knows actually, but he's saying the announcements in a couple of weeks and the I, I imagine the big thing there could be either a new game with, with Raiden or some sort of remaster. What, what do you guys think? I don't know. I think I might be in the camp that he's just talking silly. Yeah. I, I want it to be a Netflix cartoon. <laughs> That'd be very How good. How about that? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Bingo board. I'll right. watch that. Absolutely. Uh, big numbers for The Last of Us on HBO, as we alluded to earlier. The debut episode of The Last of Us on HBO earned an audience of 4.7 million viewers. That makes it the second largest uh, debut for an HBO show in the last 10 years. Only House of the Dragon, which had 9.986 million viewers, Damn. was bigger. Uh, that kind of shows you just the level of cultural cachet that uh, Game of Thrones was playing with there at the end. Uh, to have 10 yeah. million people watching House of the <laughs> Dragon like, after that last seems season. Seems like they burned it all up, too. In yeah, the, seems like they all did. Yeah, the season. And then they still got a lot of people back for House of the Dragon, so good for them, I guess. Um, but 4.7 million, yeah, sure, oh, it's about half half of what uh, House of the Dragon did. That doesn't matter. It's still huge for a big premium cable TV show debut. Uh, and as long as they can keep something, some of that momentum going, if not grow it, which I think they might, I think they're probably going to grow it. Feels like um, it'll grow. They're yeah. going to grow Feel it. They're, they're going to grow it they're like a fungus. They're going to grow it. Uh, then I think, yes, we are very much likely into uh, in for multiple seasons of The Last of Us, maybe even a few uh, spinoffs. I don't know. What do you guys think? Cool. I, I'm just happy to see that, like, Finally, a video game adaptation is really good. And, uh, <laughs> you know, they really knocked it out of the park with Last wow. of Us. So hats and, off. And to, now we know. Uh, now we know it's possible. Now this is our review possible. right here. Yeah. This is, yeah, this is, uh, this is what uh, the Mario movie needed to see, that it's possible. See, you can make a good one. Last uh, of Us crawled so everyone else could run. There it is. Uh, Silent Hill producer wants more Silent Hill projects from indie studios. In an interview with IG in Japan, Matoi... Okamoto said that there's only so much we could do ourselves, which means we need to work with lots of different indie creators if we want to make lots of different Silent Hills. Okay. That's, <laughs> that's why we made the moves to work together with people around the world who want to make Silent Hill games. And that's why we approach Bloober Team as well as Annapurna, Annapurna Interactive and No Code. Uh, Akimoto said that Konami plans to grow this strategy in the future, and he is currently accepting Silent Hill pitches from indie studios right now. Cool. So uh, even uh, even more of that. Uh, a, a lot. I, I don't know. In general, I like this concept. Um, yeah. I I don't know if I mean obviously there's uh, reservations about Bluebird working on uh, uh, Silent Hill Two remake. 
But beyond that, it's like all the other stuff they showed that people seem to be into. And I, I don't know. I just I want indie teams to work on the stuff I like. I, that's turned out some pretty cool stuff in the past, like that Zelda rhythm game from the uh, yeah Cadence uh, of Hyrule. Yeah, that Cadence was of Hyrule. Yes, that like that. Well, I'm, I wish Nintendo would. I at that time I remember thinking, man, this is it. This is what Nintendo's going to do going forward. We're going to get like two or three of these a year. They haven't done anything like that ever yeah. since. And I'm like, man, just do a million of those things. Why not? But. I don't know. Is Silent Hill a good fit for the strategy? Sure. There's enough. Yeah, there's enough open-ended, uh, like horror spookiness to facilitate uh, thirty to thirty-five developers working simultaneously working on a Silent Hill game. Like, let's go. You know what? Hey, there's a whole horror movie streaming service out there. Who's Shutter. Shutter. Yeah. The hat. That's just doling out tons and tons of original films yep. i don't know who's to say they can't do the same thing with like these indie studios and just smaller budgets maybe bigger hits i don't it's, know it's it, like the signal it, is but, folks give it to them you know yeah like let them do a silent hill you do a silent hill you do a silent hill why not it's also like i feel like it's super flexible too i feel like it can get wrapped up in so many different incantations and whatnot like Try it, you know, like I don't know, it makes sense. Make a, make a silent hill ultimate team. I'm collecting card packs, yeah. opening them up, putting my monsters together. I got a oh, five no. star pyramid head. Hell yeah. Oh, no. Um, uh, yeah, I, I think that uh, there are enough indie studios around that this is a, a pretty good idea. And it's like, you know, indie studios can, of course, do whatever they want. Uh, and if they think they have a good idea and want to pitch this and get some solid work and get a, you know, a decent paycheck, go for it. Make it happen. I'm yeah, all for it. Uh, there was a, a game on Itch that came out forever ago. I forget the title. It was like black and white. It was a text-based adventure. Similar to the case of the Golden Idol, I guess. But it was like do a detective story in the world of Silent Hill that's click-based or uh, a point-and-click and, and deduction-based. I would eat that up. Yeah, that would, that would actually be very neat. cool. Yeah, I would, would like that a cool. lot. You're welcome for the idea, Indie Studio. Yeah, consider yourselves pitched, Akimoto. Yeah, uh, get pitched. Uh, get, get pitched. Uh, pitch up in this bitch. Um, awesome <laughs> games done quick raised two point six million for the Prevent Cancer Foundation. That's just a nice. quick little headline there. I just figured we'd give them a shout out. Well done, as always. Summer games done quick will return May twenty eighth through June fourth. Uh, I had a lot of fun watching those speed runs on Friday on UPF, and I'm like, oh yeah, I wish I would have had more time. I would have made more time just to watch this in my off time, but I'm like, I'm glad we did that at the very least because I saw some good ones. It was an exciting time. And I'll be there for summer games done quick. Yeah, the the airboat run in it in its own was insane. Yes, airboat indeed. Uh, that's the kind of thing where I'm like, oh man, I would love to try that. Just the idea of rolling your mouse wheel and getting infinite airboats shooting out of you in all directions. Yeah, that's a good time. Beauty. Uh, Finally, uh, we talked about this last week. You might remember I was like, hey, the Xbox plus Bethesda developer direct. They've basically confirmed it. It could get announced at, at any at any moment now. Well, it's about the next day. They actually did <laughs> announce it. So uh, January 25th is when it's going to happen. Uh, they've confirmed four games will show up there for sure. Elder Scrolls Online, Forza Motorsport, Minecraft Legends, and Redfall. We should get release dates for... The, the content for Elder Scrolls Online as well as and then those other three games. We should get that de the, the, those details for all those things. Maybe there could be some other surprises, but we don't. They have they've really downplayed that possibility. So at the very least, I would just say people should just go in looking forward to those four games. Is is that enough for now? No, I'm doing the opposite now because of how much they're downplaying it. Now I'm building up my excitement of like, there it is. You guys oh, are no. gonna do something. You guys are gonna do something. Come on, Big Phil. It's gonna be about forty minutes. It'd be a long time to fill, uh, t you know, ten or four, ten minutes per game, I guess. Uh, and now that's possible because they could do, a, 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 you know, a prolonged uh, interviews with developers, things like that. They could show off gameplay, have someone actually play it. But still, that seems like a long time for just four games. So I'm, 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 I'm hopeful that we'll get even more. But if they give us a good, solid release date for Redfall, Forza Motorsport, uh, those two games I'm really looking forward to. Mm -hmm. I'll. Take a look at that, that Minecraft RTS. Sure, why not? Okay. Um, well, there you go. Yeah. I, I was going to ask if we could play the Redfall game and if someone could enlighten me what Minecraft Legends is. It's an RTS? Why? That's right. I'm trying. Uh, hey, why not? I think it's probably what happened. That's Fair. probably how, how the pitch meeting went. Why, why wouldn't we do a Minecraft RTS? And then oh. the, per the person that was like going to say the, all the reasons why not to do it, like, was out that day or they were <laughs> taking a bite of their sandwich and they're like, all right, greenlit. 
Oh, so many cubes in that game. All cubes. <laughs> Man, cube heavy year. It's a very cube heavy year. I can't wait to hear more about the the new game Redfall that I am uh, interested in now. I I told Lucy cuz like two weeks yeah, like two episodes ago on this show I brought up Redfall and you didn't care. And then I had Lucy on on Wednesday and she was like I am an arcane freak. And I'm like so excited. And I had to explain to her, I like, I, I, I mentioned the game and everyone in the Bombcast was like, I don't even know what that is. Then the next week we came in and there was the whole thing about how it's like a Far Cry 2, but made by Arcane. And then we got excited, right, Bacalar? And then I yep. told Lucy the day after, I'm like, and now we're all in. And she was very happy to hear that. There so, we go. Okay, cool. Yes, we've, we've, uh, we've redeemed ourselves in the eyes Across of the Lucy board. James Games. Oh, thank God. Uh, yes, I was worried. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, I, the showcase coming up soon. If Redfall is a good game, honestly, at that at this point, I'm like, it's gonna feel like um mana from heaven and oasis <laughs> in the desert for Microsoft first party because they've oh. just had nothing. Yeah, you know, I mean, you guys remember what games did Microsoft release in 2022? Can you guys remember? Um, um the right, how about this? What was the last major Microsoft Halo. first party release? Halo in 2021. Because then they did um they had Pentiment. And there was one other one. Oh, they oh. did the 1.0 version of Grounded. It's like what? Yeah, oh, 1.0 version of Grounded. Like that's where we're at with them in 2022. So, oh. uh, yeah, they kind of, they really need Redfall to come through uh, for them. Obviously, I think Forza Motorsport's going to be fine. It's going to be a Forza Motorsport, uh, and yeah, it's going to be rebooted and probably look real, real, real nice. But boy, they need something like Redfall to hit. Uh, Jan. That does it for the news. I would like to hand this show back over to you now, bud. I'll take it, and then I'll set it down because it needs to cool off for a little bit. And, you know, the rest of us... Oh, oh th thank you, Jeff. Uh, yeah, there you go. We're, we're going to cool off. We're going to take a quick bricky break, and we'll be back to read some emails from you, the folks at home. Dun, See you in a bit. Dun, 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 dun. Whatever happened to tight 90s, y'all? I miss a tight 90 movie. Get in, get out, we're done. I can recommend this movie to a friend, and then they're like, oh, cool, this didn't take up too much of my life. Thank you for recommending this. Now, I try and recommend a friend, hey, here is this movie, it's two dudes, one of them doesn't want to be friends anymore, but it's hella long. It's like, it's like I used to be able to plan my night and not have to worry about, like, sitting down two times to watch the same film. Yeah. Like, let's get in and out. Come on, Days time is money. 95 minutes, ooh, all ooh. right? Here's a billion dollar idea, because, Backlar, you hinted on something, finishing in one night, right? Like, yeah. my partner and I, she'll multiple fall asleep. She'll, she'll fall, yeah, sometimes multiple nights. <laughs> she will fall asleep during a movie, and then mm -hmm. I will feel bad about continuing on, but she's okay Tre with it. You're cheating. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, so... See, he, Yo, video streaming apps, take this idea. Here's another billion dollar idea for y'all. We shouldn't be giving these out for free. Introduce a, a, a bookmarker, right? Of like, all right, I'm gonna hit a button. That's when someone fell asleep. She can go back, reference this bookmark later on. Because right. getting my partner to scroll through to a, like a time code that I'll write down, she's not gonna oh, do it. No, forget. Mm -hmm. She's gonna forget. start the movie all over again, which I guess is fine for them, but I don't know. I I think that's why people, I think that's why, I mean, it's not why um, TV is uh, more popular now than film, but I think part of the, you know, part of it or the, one of the added benefits, right, is like, oh, the most I really have to devote is an hour and I can get that thing. I can consume that thing, right? I can watch the show. I mean, very rarely, unless you're like a Stranger Things situation where like one episode is, you know, 200 minutes. I was going to say Stranger um, Things. Like, what were, what were you doing? But anyway, yeah. Um, like, the, come on, hour? I'll give you an hour. Let's go. I, give, I got an hour for you. Sure. What, what, what if we go and we, we knock on Microsoft's door and we say, hey, we know hey. you've got like 2 million unused connects. Give us the connects. We're going to install them in every home in America. And then the only time a show or movie is allowed to play is when it tracks your eyes and it knows both people are watching the screen. And then the second someone looks away or falls asleep, it stops and you can't start it again until both are looking. I think what that the... this is um, a very good, I think this, that we should pay for this uh, with public funds. Congress mm -hmm. should look into this immediately. What a, what a needless thing. What an mm. insanely... I think it's a pretty good setup, just like the setup of Glass Onion, if I'm, if I'm being honest. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh almighty. <laughs> 
uh, connect facing everyone's couch <laughs> all across the country is a way better setup. <laughs> you think that's weird? Think about us now where a camera is constantly pointed at us. Mm -hmm. I can I've never had a camera pointed at me. I can't even imagine what that must be like. That's insane. You're right. You're Anyone right. who has a camera pointed at them, especially right this very second, is a fucking idiot. Well, just got to put that out there. Let's let's play the email music. These are the emails for the show. Emails. You can send your emails to bombcast at giantbomb.com. We're all receiving them now, so we all see them. Uh, and hey, thanks for sending your emails in. They, we've, you know, there was a slight dip in emails, and then uh, it's gone back up. You know, get your random cues out of there. Sometimes you don't got time to call into the voicemail dump truck. You can send your questions, passing thoughts, confessions of love, not towards us, but towards, I don't know, Pearl Onions via Ooh. via texts to, to us. As long as they're Pearl text. and not glass. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bombcast Giant Bomb is the email address. <laughs> Thanks, Dan, for chiming in in the chat. First email comes from Rob from Salem, Oregon. They write, Dear Bombcast, I love the show and listen frequently. Something that I notice that strikes me as odd and hilarious is how you never know when Jan is going to go from PG Jan to rated R Jan. Mm -hmm. It's so funny how sometimes he seems to actively keep his Mickey Mouse Club facade, but at any point can switch up and be the dirty Bob Saget of the crew. It's a bizarre and beautifully enough. A uh, beautiful anomaly to behold. I have nothing more to add to this. I just love the show and really enjoy the mystery that is Jan. Keep up the great work, Rob Salem, Oregon. I just want to be rated R Jan this whole year. Mm -hmm. Live Non-stop shout man. and come every chance he gets. Yeah. That's right. I mean, that's like, right. That I I'm trying to think of like what my what like my mind's eye projection of Jan is, and I, it's probably somewhere in the middle. It's maybe like a PG thirteen. I, I like to think of myself as like a bad boy and like when I'm like edgy with my friends and then like I'll talk to my partners like hey like I was real cool back there right I was a badass and she was like yeah. she's like yeah but you always dress like you're Paddington though so <laughs> I can't get behind you I just think of Paddington I'm like <laughs> man I do think of Paddington when I look at you Jan absolutely that's a very good thing though that is very funny and then and then I was like well, what about that time I got in that dude's face because he was rude to us and then she tells me it's like you're wearing a red shirt and then khaki pants you looked like Winnie the Uggs. Pooh yeah, he yeah. thought you were in. He thought you were like in middle school. He's like, yeah, I can't mess with this little boy. I'm not gonna fight with this child. Oh, man, one day I'll be a badass, guys. One day. <laughs> you just need a chain wallet. Like, stop pretending. Mm -hmm. That's um, what all that, you know, the one thing all badasses have in common: chain wallet. Chain wallet. Okay, is it? Hmm, is it defeating the purpose to be a badass if it's like a gold chain wallet, or is that like a gold? different like fork in the road mm -hmm. here? I feel like the gold uh, chain wallet would not be taken seriously. All serious people mm. wear mm. gold It's chain. too malleable, right? That's the whole point of gold, yeah. Oh, no, right, right. So, okay, that defeats my second question that I was going to ask. Instead of a gold chain, what about a leather one? But then at that point, leather you're chain. like bordering leather cuff guy territory, and I don't want to yeah, be there. Yeah. I mean, you're sending messages you might not want to be sending. Yeah, oh, but you're going to cuff. No, I'm going to yeah, cuff. Like you're a cuff boy, you know? Man, my my planned heel turn of 2023 is not off to a strong start, y'all. Uh, uh, Black Mama Chad says I'm that a, a leather chain is just a belt. Good nuts. observation. Ah, nuts. All right. Uh, well, next email comes from. I do say come. See, I'm doing it now. <laughs> oh my god, my virgin ears. He do be saying come. Boy, no uh, say come. <laughs> Matt from uh, SC, I'm going to say that's uh, Southern Charleston. I don't know if that's a place. <laughs> uh, dear Bombers, my parents have been getting into jogging recently. Speaking of calm, sorry. <laughs> and over the last while, they've been looking on Facebook for any sort of nearby running events. The other day, my dad came from the other room and asked if I knew what a Naruto run is. And I face palmed and told him it was a joke and it was not a real event he could go run in. Then he asked me <laughs> what it was so he could be in on the joke too, and I explained what the Naruto run is, and I wanted to die. 
Come on. Oh, yes. This is exactly the dad I'm going to be. <laughs> Have you guys ever been deeply embarrassed explaining some nerd crap to a friend or a loved one? Or worse yet, embarrassed explaining how you know the crap in the first place? Thanks. Love the pod. Matt from Southern Charleston. Oh, I mean, all the fucking time. Like, I, I yeah. don't have any evidence aside from anecdotal here, but like, I'm pretty convinced I'm the one with the most normie friends uh, who are not ingrained in our subculture weirdo uh, behavior, right? Like, I just feel like I must, I have to explain everything to everyone I know. And I oftentimes feel like the one who's left out of the loop, especially, uh, you know, here. So oh, right. We had a whole show. We had a whole <laughs> show that we, you know, we'll do again one day when we fucking have the time. But, uh, yeah, like that's it. So it's terrible, but I don't know if, uh, having to explain what a Naruto run is would make me want to die. I think that's kind of like a cute thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I usually, I don't get embarrassed like when I'm explaining something like that. I do think often about like when I am whining about some stupid thing Nintendo does, I imagine trying to explain my yeah. complaint to like a grandparent who is like in World War II. Oh, right. And, and I'm just you like, no problems. You know? yeah, I'm, yeah I'm, well, you have to understand the online isn't perfect. And they're like, Oh, okay. Uh, cool. Well, can I tell you about what it was like in Iwo Jima or something? And I'm like, okay, never mind. You're right. You're right. I shouldn't be complaining. That's usually what goes through my head when I start doing first world problem whining. Look, Jeff, every generation has its problems. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right? There was Hitler, and then there was the Nintendo Switch Online system, and they're basically equivalent. When you think about it, we have more Hitlers now, so... Yes. <laughs> I don't mean you to know? besmirch anyone that served in World War II. Please don't come <laughs> after me. Uh, thank you for your service. Um, yeah, but have you used that Nintendo app? Come on. If people, they want to go on there to talk to people. I already have Discord. Come on. This oh. is <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, you make up a valid point. Of course, we all support that. It's yeah. like it's like D Day all over again. Am I being a, come on, right? Yeah. For, uh, yeah. Yeah. Here's what I do. I just don't tell any of my friends what I do for a living. So what do they think you do? They have no idea. Like my friends from high school, they were like, what do you do again? Like, what's what's up? You still doing video? Are you still doing video? And I'll be like, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah I'm video. doing video. Still yeah. doing it. I, st uh, I yeah, show still press work. the buttons. I do video and uh, every couple weeks a uh, paycheck comes. Yeah. <laughs> this is one of the videos they do. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Do when the you, video. When you think about it, there's three videos right now, so I'm hella multitasking. Yes. <laughs> you can pay th thrice. Well, actually, there's four because it's us three videos on another video. And then if we take whatever's going on behind Grub right now, that's another video. I don't know. Hell? I'm putting on my <laughs> binoculars. Grub, can you teach the children hand binoculars? Because I just need this to continue going. Oh, they do that. They do that all the time. Fuck Addy. yeah. Addy. Hand binoculars. Oh, none of that, Dad. Yeah, there we go. There we go. There is one time for the kid. You know, uh, I realize we all have like an equal amount of frustration in explaining it is what we do to normies, right? Like they're they're just. And I think we should all just agree on something, a, a, a real like easy to use terminology. You know, I told you my kid tells his friends I'm a, I'm a YouTuber, you know. <laughs> yeah, like my, my little cousin tells his classmates that I'm a YouTuber as well. Right. And then like, you know, I guess they're more right than other people are wrong. Um, I like, well, we need to come up with some easy sort of thing <laughs> that is just flows off the tongue and you can just sort of use it as a catch all. Uh, I mean, I, 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 I said, I do podcasts and then people say, well, you're a white guy. So that makes sense. And then we nice. just go on. Yeah. Uh, I, I just, po I, 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 even, even, podcast someone. Yeah. I don't know. But even like my, my five-year-old now is like, do you have a podcast tonight? And so it's like, she knows what I'm doing now. Like, I think yeah. if she can get it, everyone can get it. Uh, a mild influencer, not like an influence, like a full influencer. Yeah, maybe like mild, mid, mid influencer. Oh, I like that mid influencer. Like that. Let's just add Mitch influencer. Yeah, yeah, we're Mitch influencers. That's pretty good. I did change his name on my phone to Mitch Tolkoto. He's no longer whatever it was before. So he's just <laughs> fully on Mitch now. Uh, uh, we'll uh, well if we just keep leading into Mitch, we'll eventually like attract an odd crowd. 
Not not our mm-hmm. good old, not our Mitch. A different Mitch. You don't want that. You don't want that. Um. All right. All right. Next email comes from Zach from Oceanside, California. Uh, that's all of California right now, actually. <laughs> hey there, GB cast and crew. Whenever I think of who game devs interact with during certification, it all it's always some Colonel Sanders looking motherfucker, regardless of platform. Any enlightenment as to how as to why would be appreciated. Thanks, DW from Seattle. I read the wrong email. I'm sorry. That was from DW, not Zach. I don't understand this. Yeah, so he's saying that when he imagines in his mind's eye the entity with which developers interact with, he sees a Colonel Sanders looking motherfucker regardless of platform. Quote like unquote. A dude in a white suit with puffy white hair. So like, you yeah. know, when a game gets like, oh, like you're certified. Yeah. I whatever. understand what that what that means. I don't know why they look like Colonel Sanders. Yeah, well, why does in a, a, a faceless nameless like back end where you're just clicking boxes. <laughs> like, why does that look like Colonel Sanders to you? Because that's, that's all it is. They're not... No, but, but that might, I real. guess what I'm also trying to say is, like, in no way does Colonel Sanders, like, exude, like, authoritative, you know, I, I, like, energy. Well, he is a colonel. You're as far as know, right? Does it get more authoritative than a colonel? I mean, I don't as know. far as we know, you know, I, I, I'm not gonna... I don't want to see his papers, but I, I want to see his papers, okay? I could see, like, Colonel Sanders does give up a little bit of... He is in the back of the store, right? He is the back there. He knows all the chicken secrets. He knows the 11 herbs and spices. And so maybe I could see like that energy being like, well, listen, I know how all this works. So not you can give me we're talking in a Kentucky fried accent, you, right? No, no, he's doing knives over out. to me. He's doing knives out right now. for the people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you're been wild bullshit. Been, yeah, I, I mean, I, I guess I, I can kind of see it. It's this is nothing what like what actually happens, but I kind of see it. Yeah. yeah, that's an interesting problem you've developed there, uh, DW. Sorry, we cannot uh, shine any other light. We probably just made it more apparent that maybe it is a Colonel Sanders looking dude. Mm-hmm. At this point, I hope this person cosplays as a Colonel Sanders. Maybe while... it's Colonel Sanders, K E R N E L, like a right, computer like Colonel. A... Oh, yeah. oh, I was thinking yeah. corn. That makes more sense. <laughs> sure, that too. Yes. All right, now is the email from Zach from Oceanside, California. Ha ha ha, that's all of California right now. Um, uh, I laughed again. <laughs> thank you, thank, thank you, thank yeah. you. Uh, here, all, here all day, well, uh, until this video is done. Mr. Bacalar, mm. I hope all is well with yourself and the Bombcast crew. I'm here at Staples Center, refuse to call it Crypto.com Arena, right now oh. with my two boys watching your devils take on my kings. This Blackwood guy is too good in the net. Anyhow, I just thought it'd be fun to email. Enjoy the rest of the season. Zach from Oceanside, California. Oh, good to hear from you, Zach. Thanks for writing in. Uh, I will take this as a benign email. I don't think there was any malice intended. No. That we did not bring up any history of being in the final together. Because that was uh, a thing I'd rather not think about. And it was a good game. Um, I stayed up for most of it. And, uh, yeah, I appreciate the call in. That sucks that they named your arena crypto.com though. I don't know what to tell you there. That's not going to be long for this world. Don't worry. No, of course not. I mean, presumably that's the company's only asset right now. Like I would imagine like, uh, someone's going to cash that back in. Um, also I was just down there and I called it the staple center and it seems like everyone else still calls it the staple center. So it's you got disgusting. that going. You guys are yeah, on not- another winning streak. Yeah, the Devils are doing real good. Yeah, um, it's a road winning streak. This sucks. Oh, they're, the you. Best, they're the best road team in the NHL. Well, no, that's got to be the Kraken, right? The Kraken just had. Oh, no, a- the Devils are. The Devils are like sixteen and two. I mean, but like the last month though, the Kraken just had that the first time in the history of the NHL where like they oh. swept a road a road yeah a, 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 a road streak and like it was like seven eight nine games or something like that. And they they're won trading every weird road records back and forth. Uh, I think the Devils are going to be at uh, Seattle very soon. Coming yeah, up, this oh, sucks. Yeah, I know. Look, what do you want? I'm going to tell you, you know, the Red Wings are not done. They're just they not. Are, they, they are. They are losing themselves right now. This is uh, whatever. He's whatever. hard. That's, my, that's the thing I always say uh, <sighs> while playing it as well. Hockey's very hard. It's ice. Okay. People yeah, forget. It's slippery. It turns out it's slippery. You know, people don't realize that. It's slippery. Uh, <laughs> it's very hard. I also will say that um, Jonathan Quick 
played like shit that night. So you, I don't think people, I don't think the Kings lost that game because the Kings uh, were bad. I think Jonathan Quick had an off yeah. night. Kings are uh, very nevertheless, good. Nevertheless, the Kings are very good. Devils are a little better. That's all. Grub, you can still wear the Red Wings jersey if you just join the 49ers with me. It's still the color red, you know. All right. Count me in. Your wagon. There I we think go. that is the bandwagon I'm riding, by the way. I think I'm riding the 49ers bandwagon. So, oh, are my you? God. I, this, I think so. What are you to get into sports, huh? Giant? Am I supposed to be a Giants fan? Like a, uh, New, York, a New York Giants hmm. fan? What, I mean, I support yeah. anyone that plays in New Jersey, so. Oh. Hey, that's, that's Giants, yeah, right? Because yeah. they played in New Jersey. Do they still play in New Jersey? What do you mean? The Giants. Didn't the Giants play? Didn't they play a few seasons in New Jersey? I, 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 or played, I, just remember they played I think, the majority of their seasons okay. in New Jersey. I, I, don't, I don't, I can't remember where their stadium is. Uh, yeah. Their stadium is in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Okay. It used right. to be yeah. across the street from where the Devils played. Okay. Um, yes, I knew they moved. I didn't know they stayed in New Jersey, though. Okay. The, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, in Jan, the, the Devils played the Sharks yesterday. Oh, how how'd my, how'd the Shark squad do? It's good. They came out really good, but uh, the Devils found a way to win in a shootout. Well, uh, you know, if I had to pick one Devils versus actual Sharks, I'd pick the Devil. Ah, oh, you're a sweet guy. You're a sweet guy. <laughs> uh, next email comes from Mike, sent from my iPhone. Hey, folks. It's Mike <laughs> from Boston. I'm in L.A. right now, across from the Angels... Uh, Angeles Stadium? Angel Stadium? Angel Stadium. <clears throat> and tonight they are hosting Monster Jam. Oh, yeah. hell yeah, Mike. Uh, at Carl Strauss Brewery uh, across the street right now. And all I can say is parents that bring kids to a brewery are fucked. My parents used to have me walk to buy cigarettes for them, but <laughs> never had me go to a bar with them before they joined uh, uh, Al Al-Anon. Al-Anon. Um, Alcoholics Anonymous. Oh, oh I are you sure that's not AI-Anon? Yeah, it could be it could be AI and on. That's yeah, they're true. They're getting to they're using AI to just write everything for them at this point. Mm -hmm. Uh because they had respect and decency for the people they got drunk with. Why the fuck do thirty to forty year olds think it's okay to bring their kids out to breweries? Uh PA to scout. I think dogs are cool to invite everywhere. Thank listen, you. Right. listen, listen, Grub, no, you go first. You go yes. first. So I uh brought my kid to a brewery this weekend, this past weekend. Oh, uh, the Finley Finley Brewery, and it's because it's a brew pub, because it's a restaurant, and yes. they have a kids. They have a literal kids menu. Of they course, they bring your kids. Your, yes, it's totally fine. I had one beer. No one else did in, in our group. It's a restaurant. Like that's what they are. I don't know what kind of. I mean, it depends on like what kind of brewery you're thinking about. But most breweries these days are just family restaurants. Like first and foremost, mm -hmm. they like you go into like their gift shops. They have kid sized gear there. Like it's it's all good. Like I, yeah. I think. Look, there's pro like there are still some breweries that like refuse to to make that pivot where mm -hmm. they're like fine, just that's want, their choice. They're like if, totally. They're like we just want forty five year old white dudes in hoodies drinking beer here, and that's that. Like and no right. tables, just standing. Right? Yes. Like that's what they want, and that's what they're gonna get. But uh, especially when I lived in Hoboken, there were like three beer gardens within uh you know walking distance and it's like they've got outdoor games they've got like rides mm -hmm. and for kids is a hundred percent yeah they had a free arcade machine yeah, stuff there. Dude, yeah a hundred percent a kid thing again there are definitely places where it's not and i think yeah. that's clear but the majority especially you know uh the more popular like you know, places, not the hole in the wall stuff. They want kids there. They're going to serve them a cheeseburger and a hot dog, and it's going to be fine. Yeah, it, it's the, I went to the Finley Brewing Company in Finley, Ohio. Uh, go, feel free to look it up. We went there, be, honestly, went there because they uh, had a dessert menu on the Google listing for uh, lava cake, and we were going to get that for, it's my, my kid's favorite, and we were going to get oh, it for her. It was yeah. her birthday. So we went there, and it turns out they didn't serve dessert anymore. <laughs> So we actually ended up having to go to uh, Olive Garden afterwards and getting dessert there. And we just got dessert and coffee. But um, hey, it was a fun night. It was good. The kids had zero issues with being at the brewery. They had a good time. Yes. Yes. Um, <clears throat> yeah. I don't know. I went to a brewery over this weekend, too. There were dogs hey. and children. And yeah. like the wackest quesadilla I've ever had. But they oh, were slammed. Sorry. They were slammed. Really? I get it. Really? I get it. Yeah. Mm. Um, all right. Let's uh, one last email. One last email. <clears throat> and now is about the time, you know, we've gone into anime, we've gone into sports. Now I think the giant bomb cast has to pivot into true crime. Um, okay. yeah, not committing crime. Eventually. 
a true crime. Yeah. Uh, this email comes from David from Newark. Uh, they also have a picture that I will flash up in a little bit. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, I'm excited about this. <laughs> I went to the Louvre a few months ago, uh, a few months ago now, and you guys were talking about weird uses for Connect last bombcast, and it sparked a memory for me. I use audio guides at museums all uh, at all the museums I go to because I can't make it to appointments on time. The audio mm. guides at the Louvre are Nintendo 3DSs. Wow. And throwing that picture up for the folks at home now. <clears throat> wow. They have maps. The 3DS tracks you through the museum, and there are points of interest on the maps that you can click for audio descriptions. It felt odd to see this almost dead system still in use en masse at a huge museum. I don't have a question about old hardware, but I have recently begun searching for Bone out from Boneville, the video game by Telltale, for my partner, and have discovered it is a huge pain to find, partially because it was on Windows XP, and partially because Telltale delisted it from Steam. Any advice? David from Newark. All right, let me see here. Bone out from Boneville. Let me look for this while you guys talk about how cool this friggin' Nintendo 3DS is. That's I really thought- sick. It I is thought the crime was going to cool. be that they stole one or was able to like come across one and like they're not going to return it or whatever. I See, don't know the I'm crime wh- happening here, though. Yeah, it's not a crime. Mm-hmm. It seems like a perfectly reasonable thing that happened. Furthermore, I am very interested. Like th- when this when I see this kind of stuff, my brain is just like, how'd this happen? <laughs> right. And maybe it's just as simple right, as like it. someone from Nintendo, like you know, their business outreach program and they like made this work with the loop. But I want to know the business dealings. I want to know the affairs that took place where like this deal got done. I find that supremely interesting. Yeah, do you think it was like, was Nintendo involved with it or like maybe yeah. they made I, a deal with like this audio guide company and, and they chose and the to audio use guide co- DS's? Like, Audio guys like, hey, can we like license the 3DS and then then we will then go do the work to like sure. work with museums. I guess and stuff. that's it's probably possible. something like that, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, like who knows? That's but that, that's the thing. Like I want to know the story. I'm I'm interested in knowing that story for sure. Me too. Uh, David from Newark. Uh, there's a website, uh, one of the most important websites on the internet called archive.org. I'm going to invite you to go there, and you're going to search for Bone Out from Boneville, and you will find, uh, hopefully, archived by a good person on the internet. Uh, they write since Telltale, Telltale Games delisted all their games from digital platforms like Steam. I decided to preserve this game by taking an increasingly rare physical copy, making a clean rip, getting high quality scans of the cover and disc, and uploading it here. So there you go. Find Bone out from Boneville. Now, you know, listen, if you can't buy it anywhere, there, there are still gray areas with copyright, but who's to say you don't, for your own personal use, print out the cover, print a disc, maybe put some art on the disc itself, put it in a disc, give it to her that way. That, that's almost more uh, nice. Like if you put all yeah. those t- t- touches oh, on it yeah. yourself, you want all that work, take it to Kinko's. They can like probably print out stuff on the disc for you or FedEx Kinko's, whatever they call it now. Like, there's ways to like do this, but the game is available. Archive.org. Go get it. it. You'll probably have to run it in compatibility mode on modern Windows systems, but it's, sh- there probably are ways to get it running. I don't like the idea of navigating through a museum on my phone is boring. But having like a 3DS with me to track through it seems incredibly exciting. I need everywhere to pick up a 3DS, whether you're a grocery store, a yes. brewery that allows children, yes. or a museum. <laughs> just go get a 3DS and just somehow incorporate it into your experience, please. Oh, you remember the McDonald's had like the training in Japan, maybe it was, uh, they had the training thing where you could get trained on a DS. Like you learned how to work at McDonald's by doing little mini games on a, a cartridge yeah. on the DS. Excuse yeah. me, card, game card. Yeah. Do you think this, do you think I can download the Louvre on my, uh, on a 3DS? The right, entire Louvre? Second. Yeah. Give me a second. Archive.org. <laughs> <laughs> the Louvre. Ah, it's, yeah, it's a big file, but yes. No, I had no idea. No. Ah, uh, nuts. Uh, all right. Well, I guess I just got to go to Paris and uh, just look at a 3DS. <laughs> Dang, uh, sorry. Hamstar no, 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 no. just made me laugh in chat. Like, you wouldn't download a Louvre. I love that. I think that's the funniest meme. <laughs> oh my god. Izzy you Izumi. Download a car. I need another Da Vinci code, but Dan, uh, Robert Langdon, is that his name? The yep. main yeah. character? Why was oh, that? You, you mean something way more interesting than Glass Onion? Sure. <laughs> Let's, wow. That is just wrong. <laughs> it just is. Wow. Just, that's You're going to put the Da Vinci code 
over yes, glass onion better than glass onion yep. you're like well, stupid well, setups but movie. all this well, all this whack movie. shit and dan brown novels now that's the real stuff but, I, but, uh, but here's my point it felt like the same goddamn thing like it's so dumb it's so fucking dumb I think one is having fun and the other is just okay, fair enough, whatever. Yeah, I'm not here to convince you to like glass onion. You do your thing. I don't know what it is. Like uh sometimes like this never this very rarely happens to me where like I will see a movie that like actually assaults my eyes. You know what I mean? Sure. Like this I, I'm not that guy. I'm mm. not the guy to be like, you know, if, like that's a Dan Riker thing. We're like, oh, I'm really sure this movie sucked ball. You know, like he, the, he that's that's his thing. It's not my thing. That's right. Sometimes yeah. it just happens to me. <laughs> We're like, I get so mad. I guess it kind of happened with that Wednesday show also, which I thought was pretty bad. But I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Here we are. I'll see the next one, though. Uh, I'll watch the next Knives, knives, knives Out. Well, I hope all of our eyes can be assaulted when we all take a group field trip to the Louvre and just stare at these 3DSs as we navigate our way through the museum. Just like we're going to navigate our way out of the emails and into the end of the show. Gentlemen, thank you for joining me today. Thank you, uh, folks at home listening, whether you're watching live, the archive, or a podcast of sorts. Hey, I don't know, we never asked this, but... If you feel compelled to rate the podcast, that'd be sick. That'd be cool. Do a five star or like a thumbs up. I don't know how any of this is tracked, but it'd be sick. It'd be cool. If you think yeah, about it. Review the podcast. Yeah. Review the yeah, podcast I, I, and I'm, say it's I'm the most handsome podcast on the internet. I've right, never reviewed it. a single podcast, and I'm going to do it right now after this show. Whoa, you're gonna, wow. I'm going to download iTunes and try to get it working. <laughs> I'm going to download all of iTunes. Uh, that can't be that big, right? Uh, but you can send your emails to bombcast at giantbomb.com if you want to get your email potentially read on the show. And again, we will entertain virtually any and everything. If you are in an awkward social situation and you want to text someone, just email us. Let's do that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, totally. Gents, what do we got for the rest of this week? We got. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. We've got. We just this morning recorded another episode of Jeff Jeff's Bizarre Adventure. Okay. That is back on the menu, which I heard is a better movie than Glass Onion. Also, okay, sure. I mean, the menu was probably pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like it's, it seems like I'm gonna like that. Also, holy shit! Thursday night, the return of Friday Night Forkin. Very excited. Yes. Get your forks out. Nothing bad can happen. We'll see you there. That'll be a lot of fun. 8 p.m. Eastern on Thursday night. Yes. Did those those contract negotiations came to, uh, came together. He, the, his his lawyers didn't eat you alive. And his he people, in there for days and days. His people were just his ruthless. people kind of look like him sometimes, just from a different angle. It's weird, dude. He thinks he's weird. fooling everyone, you know. <laughs> but I knew how to talk side to them. Lawyer, I love the side knew, lawyer. It's my favorite. Character. I knew how to talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> you just started singing in the courtroom. It was just yeah. odd, but I just welcomed it. You know, yeah. it did. It did go to court. Yes, it did go yeah. to court. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I'm happy that can happen. Well, uh, we have Glubber, uh, we have Grubberling, uh, plays Mike Tyson's Punch Out tomorrow. Uh, damn it! I thought we were getting my Flubber idea off the ground. Finally, uh, yeah, F F Flubberling is the whole other thing. We'll, we'll work on that later. I need some more work, Jan. Uh, I'm uh, Dan's going to teach me how to beat Mike Tyson and Mike Tyson's Punch Out, and then if I get good enough to do that, maybe he'll start teaching me some speed running strategies. We'll see. Um, and then we have Blight Club back on Thursday as well. And then Game S Mornings off for the rest of this week. So tune in for that. I think I'm going to have Mikey on tomorrow because uh, Lucy's busy. So look out for that, everybody. Fantastic. Well, folks, nothing bad can happen on a Friday night. And nothing can, bad can happen after listening to the Giant Bobcast. It's pretty much guaranteed. It's on the box. That's right. It is on the podcast box. And I wish you a happy Tuesday. Uh, uh, take care. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. I'm going to put my eye hand binoculars on as I bid you adieu. And as we go away, goodbye, everyone. Thank you for listening to the Giant Bombcast. <laughs>
with support from Jeff Grubb, Dan Reichert, Jess O'Brien, Lucy James, Tamor Hussein, Jason A. Stryker, Matthew Rory, and me, Jeff Bacalar. Our theme music is provided by Tom Monda. Our logo is designed by Dave Schopenek, and you can find him online with the handle at sign Dave Saved the Day. Justin Vachon is our sweet little art boy. And thank you so much for listening. Of course, a kiss on the cheek to you at home. Mwah. <laughs>